can't hear a thing. There it is. Thank you. Try to do it very traditionally here with the, uh, I think the most traditional and the original uh, pine. I know we had the joy of baking that we uh, talked about, so don't be mad. <laughs> oh boy. So, I recommend the skillet. Yeah, well, I think it's going to give a nicer finish, and I, I worried about plating it. You know, no, and you I, don't. no, you don't. We're going to do this. You're okay. fine. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a little less worried now because I see when it, uh, I see that you let, you pull it from the oven when it's finished its cook time. And then you, within five, you know, after five minutes of initial cool, then you flip it when it's still in a kind of liquid, uh, loose state. So it's not going to be like prying caramel. Oh, it'll um, come right out. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess did you find yourself a nice plate that you can put? Let, let, let's do a test plating. Find a plate, <laughs> put it on top of that skillet and <laughs> do a flippy. All right, we're going to do a test. Let me go grab. Let me go grab. I was going to put it on the traditional cake holder, I think, which will be fine. So let me uh, let me grab that. I don't even know if that plate's going to be big enough. See, that's where the mistake happens. You find a plate that's the wrong shape or it doesn't fit nicely, and then all of a sudden you're covered in hot sugar. And the name of the game on this one in safety is hot sugar equals second and third degree burns. Nothing will make you squeal more than getting burnt with hot sugar. All right, this is uh, this is what I wanted to use because it has a nice surface and it has a nice grip on it. So I'm not worried about you know having it flip out or something like that. Hi, Drew, you have a link. So I guess we're in this kind of. Uh, All right, oh. so let's imagine. That that skillet is hot. Okay. So you're going to put the cake stand in the one hand, and you're going to have you're going to have a pot holder. Yeah, two. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm gonna so put you're going to that bad boy over just like that. You're going to have the skillet on one of those grates, and you're going to put the cake holder on the other, and then you have to flip. Let's check it out. Let's check it perform here. Got to make sure this thing is as stable as can be. Whoa, there we go on it. So. And gently, ever so gently, stick it on the counter. Okay. And then you're going to pull back the cast iron ever so slowly because fast means splash. Okay, yeah, because that's really hot, uh, hot uh, brown it's sugar. It's going to be pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, so now that you've done the test run and you're comfortable with it, that actually is the hardest part of this recipe, yeah. is the plating. I'm the most nervous about that. I'll be, uh, I'll yeah. be honest. You got so, this. Good morning, Bean. Yeah, the actual making of the cake itself seems pretty easy. Uh, oh, yeah, this is easy. You know, the joy of baking wanted me to separate egg whites from uh, the yolk. Makes the and cake fluffier. Yeah, make the cake fluffier. So we're, this one will be a little, little bit denser. So we're going to use uh, one and a third cups of all-purpose flour here. And I, you can, you know, basically any flours that uh, gold metal, Pillsbury, they're all pretty good uh, flours. General all-purpose. I like to use gold metal when I bake because it always seems to. I always have success sometimes with. Uh, Pillsbury, but it's probably just me. 
that had a problem. Gold medal's not bad. I prefer when I'm baking cakes to use what's called white lily. Yeah, white hey, lily. Hey, Valerie. Uh -huh. yeah, we can't. Uh, we can't get white lily out here. I would use. I that can't too. either. But do you have a fresh market? Uh, yeah. Is that like a Whole Foods or something? It's it's sort of like a Whole Foods. Fresh market sells it. Okay. Let me say hi to uh, Mallory. My, my. We got the juice in this eye. We got juice. Warren. And uh, let's see. So we got one in, a, one in a, yeah, we're making a pineapple upside down cake. So we got one and a third cups of flour here. And it's a rainy first day of spring here. Not, not cold, but just uh, we've had four or five days of rain free, so. Um, we got three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar in here. There we go. And I'd like to, uh, Ellie, you'll tell you end place. Why don't you explain what end place means? Mise in place is French for having everything in front of you and ready to go. You've measured, you've got all your measuring utensils for maybe your vanilla. You've got your spoons out. You've anticipated, hey, I might need a pinch of salt. Here's my salt. Here's everything that I need to go. Even though, I will say this, sometimes I like to go back and forth and back and forth because I'm trying to get in those 10,000 steps per day. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of an exercise baking kind of thing. Keeps Multitasking. Your legs, keeps your legs nice. Hi, o o um. And uh, yeah, so that's it. We got our one and a third cups of flour, three quarters cups of sugar. We're going to be using uh, tea two teaspoons of uh, baking powder, and uh, usually I try to get the aluminum free, but I haven't been to the place that uh, sells that. I think it's uh, I don't know, it's the one with the Indian on it, Tecumseh or whatever. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, what do you have, Clapper Girl? Yeah, I have Clapper Girl. Yep. I can name that baking powder by the label. <laughs> yeah, I've always used it. Uh, you know, there's some some people have talked about a link between Alzheimer's and aluminum on cookware. I'm not sure about that, but this has sodium aluminum sulfate. Yeah, I try to get the non-aluminum. Uh huh. And it's it's more a health concern than it is a chemical reaction thing. Exactly. Some people believe too much aluminum is not good for you. In a pinch, would I use the Clapper Girl? You bet your ass I would. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, because you don't really eat that. And what are they using commercially? You know, that's the thing. Uh, when they're commercially, doing usually they they don't even use baking powder. They use baking soda. Uh huh. Which is a, cheap. Which is a uh, a leavener there uh, for sure. Uh, let's see, a half a teaspoon of salt we're going to be using here. And I've just got everything in place, as Ellie described, because I don't, yeah, Oliver, welcome to you. I don't, uh, you know, as much as possible because I'm on a live stream here, a live uh, hangout, to just try to have everything here. We're going to use a quarter cup of vegetable oil, which I have set aside. I'm going to get the milk in a bit. We're going to need three quarters of a cup of milk here. One teaspoon of uh, vanilla, which I have here. And I know we talk about natural versus uh, uh, imitation, but I've had uh, people just cannot really tell the difference, honestly. And that's $15, $20 a bottle for the Mexican vanilla. Hi, CC. Let's see it. I got a quarter of a stick of uh, butter. And it's. Uh, Right here, and it doesn't really have to be soft. It's going to make the uh, top of it. A half a cup of uh, brown sugar, which I already have set aside here. And uh, in place of a pineapple, I did, uh, and I don't want to slice a pineapple, so I got the pineapple slices, a 20 ounce can here. Do you have so, it drained? Yeah, not yet. I'm going to drain it when we get uh, when we get underway here. Going to drain that. Mm -hmm. I'll probably turn that over now just to let that be. And about maritino cherries? You're going to be happy. I am. <laughs> there they are. Look there, at that. And 
Dole's yeah. not only a brand, he was the inventor of the machinery that made pineapples into rings. Yep. Little you mystery. Go to, uh, yep. And also, you go to Hawaii and you see some of the. Uh, Beautiful. If you ever have a chance to, I don't even know if there's any working plantations for pineapples. Hi, Charles. I don't even know if uh, there's any working plantations left. I mean, when I was on Oahu, you had to go very far into the interior up to the higher country to see Dole's exhibition plantation, which was really just a showcase to sell shit out of their, uh, their uh, factory store or whatever you... Uh, uh, yeah, nothing. CC says nothing used wrong with using con canned pineapples. One good thing about uh, canned pineapples is these are probably quality picked at the peak of ripeness. Whereas, who knows what I get in the way of a pineapple, and then I have to worry about getting a tough spot in it. And Ellie said the way they core these, you know, these machines that core and slice off the outside husk. I don't know what you call it, the skin. Um, they do a pretty good job. So that machine is still used today, even though it was invented in the early 1900s. Absolutely. So welcome aboard to everybody. Bean says, uh, "I feel like I'm skipping class. I left Sonny's class. Talk about stalkers. I had to come stalk Rosie. I love that." <laughs> Two of the biggest importers of pineapples in the world are Dole and Unifruity, and I'm sure. Rosie's completely familiar with Unifruity. Yeah, United Fruit Company. And I think they were in New Jersey, weren't they? I mean, they're uh, everything they're, exports to New Jersey eventually. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a that's a mega huge company, sure. and I, I think Chiquita might be one of their uh, their brands. I think Chiquita is now part of Unifruity. Okay, yeah, I think it's United uh, United Fruit Company, absolute monster that nobody, very few people have ever heard about because it's one of those privately held companies like uh, Cargill, which is a big flower and uh, commodity. They're uh, they're probably a hundred billion dollar business that nobody's heard about because it's all privately uh, privately Corporate held. farming. Yeah. Hi, uh, hi, Jen. Got home from the range. Hey, here with us again this weekend. Yeah, uh, Jen says United Fruit is now Chiquita. Yep. So, so they, they went with the lady with the fruit on her head rather than the stupid sticker that said Unifruity. Is that the uh, that's the car been Carmen Miranda eyes with the? Uh, I love that. <laughs> I love the banana how sticker. How she danced with that damn thing on her head and kept it on. So. Grab my coffee real quick and we'll wait. Uh, Wait about uh, 10 more minutes. Uh, let's see, you need to make bacon wrapped swine apple to go with I'm that. Gonna, I'm going to give you a, a, a cautionary tale, Rosie. Do not get any maraschino cherry juice on the granite. Okay. <laughs> because yeah. trying to clean the granite from the red little streaks in it is a bitch. <laughs> okay, yeah, because I got really nice... Uh, I think I paid, put like, uh, I don't know, a couple grand at least into granite around here. So I don't want to have it. I will I, tell you everything that you cannot get on your granite because I have done it. I'm on my second round of granite. <laughs> oh, wow. I wouldn't even want to, uh, wouldn't even want to um, get, I sure as hell wouldn't want to get any of this on my uh, clothing either. You know, I got this white. Uh, white yeah, top. white. It, you're to gonna see. need to like not get see you're using so few of them you should be able to place them effortlessly yeah it should, but be, should be easy do the placement of them when you go to place it not on the granite because gotcha. anything red even your coffee you don't even think about it. coffee stains yeah and your granite is the same as my granite i used to have dark green which made the uh -huh. room look like a mausoleum so last spring we changed granite and I'm gonna put down and, a. Uh, I'm gonna put down a towel. You know. A, good uh, idea. Tea, and and layers of a tea towel here, and then it'll be kind of protective for that. So. Yeah, so th there's your cautionary thing. Aside of plating, there is also the danger of maraschino cherry juice on granite. And if anybody wants to link CC or uh, Jen, just uh, just say the word or Mallory in the side. It's uh, fine. I know CC is a pretty. 
uh, pretty uh, reputed great cook and baker, so you're welcome to come on, uh, come on too. So I'm going to just grab my coffee real quick and we'll get underway. Yeah, two biggest exports out of Honduras, fruit and cocaine. Yeah, that's where, uh, Jan said, that's where the term Banana Republic came from. Amen. Honduras, and I'm not sure what the other, like Guatemala, yeah. You know, Mallory, that's a good idea. When I'm going to play with a lot of maritino cherries, and see, when I do baking, I do like 12 dozen cookies at a time with a little cherry on them. I wrap the end of my countertop in saran. I take it right off the roll. And it sticks and you can put it under i wrap the whole thing so nothing's getting to it then you just take it up ball it up throw it out I used but to that's think, like the flat end i used to think maraschino cherries were like a uh, candy or something but actually it's just there is a variety of cherry that's grown right it uh it's a maraschino cherry so interestingly enough they're pickled Yeah, I better quality control taste one. <laughs> Jen hates them. I like them. I use them. They're fancy. They come in colors, too. You don't have to necessarily get red. Yeah, I heard. I was surprised that they uh, they come in colors, too. Don't you people sleep? Yeah, I got a great... I had a power sleep from about 1 o'clock till about 9 o'clock. I felt great. Here's yeah. where I like to use maraschino cherries. The juice. I sometimes, when I'm making biscotti, take some of that pink juice and add it. And uh, I make pink drizzle, which is so fancy. Nice. Nice. Well, we're going to have some fun. Let me just finish my, get my coffee ready. And we'll get underway here. Ellie already had me run through the uh, plating exercise here. With the, That's uh, right. Because We're safety part, first around here. That's the part I'm most nervous about is turning that over and getting that on the plate without some type of slippage. And of course, we all know that cake's going to be hotter than hell with Hot brown, sugar. brown sugar, which can burn the hell out of you. Oh, yeah. I've done it. If you could screw it up, I've done it. Well, this will be my first time. It doesn't look like it's certainly the hardest cake in the you world. Can, you got this. You yep. got this. I got this one, so I've been draining the uh, pineapple slices, so they're pretty much uh, pretty much you drained. Are right. Not dripping, because any added water to our sugar mixture is going to throw off there the final go. product. Yep, there's our uh, pineapple slices we got. So there's going to be a lot of leftover, but it's good eating, and I think it's always uh, always healthy pineapple, anyways. I think it's got a lot of vitamins. Are you going to do a ham next weekend? I don't know if we're going to do a ham, but I'm sure going to do a coconut cake. That's for darn sure. So I was going to say, if you're going to do a ham, those maraschino cherries and your leftover slices go right on that puppy. Yeah, wouldn't that be uh, fancy? So, well, let me get my mixing bowl here. And I'm going to, I've got the oven preheated to 350 degrees. And in the mixing bowl, I'm going to add my one and a third cups of all-purpose flour. Like I said, I use uh, I use gold metal, and uh, Ellie likes to use white lily. I can't get that. But I will use gold metal if I have to. And uh, you know, we were talking about Rose Beer Bomb Levy and her uh, Rose Levy Burn Burn yeah, Bomb. Rose Levy Beer Bomb. That's right. So. She uh, wrote the cake Bible. Yeah, the cake Bible. Yep, and I have a I have a lot of this. I have a lot of her uh, recipes, especially uh, especially bread. I find bread challenging but very satisfying when you get it right. Okay. She was now. on tour last year, and with her new book, the Baking Bible. Yeah, so I, I pretty much regard she must make good coin from. Uh, gold metal because they have the bread flour with her image. Her husband's a cardiologist. It was a hobby. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like, uh, sounds like Sheldon Adelson of uh, Las Vegas Sands married an Israeli that's a gynecologist, so go figure. 
Hey, so, you know what? If you come home from a hard day of cardiology, you need a piece of cake. Yeah, and you need to do a little gambling too, right? So. Amen. All right, so we're going to add in our uh, – we're put, I'm putting in the flour, the sugar, the bay. I'm putting in two teaspoons of the uh, baking powder here, and I'll get my wire whisk out. It's important that you combine the ingredients well, the dry ones, so you don't get any spots that don't rise or – you know, have any issues, and I've had that happen before where I forgot to combine the uh, ingredients and stuff. So, Charles, you know how to make good rice. You uh, wash your rice a little bit, a cup, and then you add uh, a cup and cup and a half, cup, cup and a half of water. You bring it up for uh, to boil, or uh, just when it's starting to uh, bubble a little bit. And you back it off uh, to lowest heat for five minutes and then just take it off of the uh, growing up in China. I sure as hell knew how to make, uh, not growing up and living in China, I sure as hell knew how to make that. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. That's going to go in. Just regular granulated sugar, nothing fancy dancy on that. I noticed some people like to put turbinado sugar down on the bottom, and that's sort of a big crystal. Uh, or uh, natural and processed, which isn't white. Yeah, and some some people like that kind of crust that it puts on top of the uh, organic thing. sugar. They call it. Yeah, so I'm gonna put. Uh, uh, let's see, for our salt, it's just gonna be a little pinch of uh, half a teaspoon of salt here, and I just usually best not to do that over your over your. Uh, ingredients. I've had salt spillage pouring onto a spoon and basically had to get rid of all that. So uh, let's see, get my wire whisk here. This is where I shake it. Woo! <laughs> Guys always seem to like this part. <laughs> Rosie likes the Morton salt. Yeah. Ooh, there we go. Uh, that clabber girl, Morton Salt girl, it's a whole entire sorority over there. I'm trying to remember what the name of the uh, baking powder with the, it's red, oh, it's uh, Calumet or, uh, yeah, Calumet baking powder is another one. It has, it's red and silver, it has the uh, uh, Native American sheep in the war bonnet on it. I like Rumford. Yeah, Rumford too, Rumford's a good one. There's Davis, which is a, got over a hundred years old. Mm -hmm. She says, uh, whisking the flour will aerate it too, which is always good. It just says it's going to incorporate a little bit of uh, fluffiness. Now, the, the uh, tell the difference, Ellie, the one that you were going to make with the uh, separating the egg whites from the yolks. When, when you're achieve? making a traditional one, in order to give it a little lift, you whip, you separate your eggs, you put the yolks to the left, the right, the uh, whites to the right, and you add a little pinch of cream of tartar. And then after you finish your batter, you would fold in the whites, and that gives it a little lift, and it makes your cake nice and light and airy. Now, I'm, I'm with you on this, Rosie. I'm not always crazy about a lot of egg whites in my cake. Yeah. When I stick my fork in the cake, I don't want a crumb. I want it to stick straight the hell up. I want a solid piece of cake. Yeah. You know, that's, so, a, that's a great point. That's a great point because uh, I found that uh, I don't want too much crumb in the cake either and too much lift, too much air between. I like the density that can be achieved in a lot of cakes. And particularly, if you recall, when you have wedding cake, the density of a wedding cake, it's to me, it's almost impossible to achieve in a in a home kitchen. At least for me, I've never been able to. But uh, more that fat. Kind of, that kind of, add that, more fat. Yeah, that kind of uh, that kind of tight density. All right. So, well, welcome aboard, Aaron. Nice to see you. Uh, let's see. One day we're going to make my my almond paste pound cake. And you will have the density that you seek. Okay, that's good. Uh, 52 Suffles in the house, and I believe he actually lives on a longboat on uh, is a canal guy in the uh, UK. He has a teeny tiny kitchen area. Yep. 
and it's really uh, yeah, it's really cool. I think that because I've seen I've seen videos of uh, uh, canal boating through whales, and they have this one place that it's an aqueduct. It's like 180 feet in the air, and it's the scariest thing you'd ever want to see. This, uh, this boat canal actually goes at 180 feet in the air across that, these tremendously high arches. And there's no railing on the side next to the boat, so you're literally just looking down the left side, 180 feet to the ground. On the right side, there's a, a pathway that goes behind it that does have a fence. But boy, I can't hardly even watch that without getting a weird feeling in the pit of my, pit of my stomach, so. All right. So I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to get three quarters of a cup of milk here, grab that. So I'll be stepping out of the picture. I was a little short on uh, on uh, bowls and stuff. So let me, uh, let me go ahead to that, and then we're going to add the oil to it. the milk and the oil. And that'll be our, uh, that'll be our liquid component. So let's see. There's your come out milk. Some people will do this separately and on there. So that's uh, two thirds. Sometimes I like to add the wet in one bowl and then do yeah, it. Exactly. Three. Exactly. I think that's a good way to uh, good way to do it too. I don't want to freak out Mallory Williams. I just sat one little. Let's freak her out. Let's freak her <laughs> out. <laughs> One little way in there. Don't freak out. Put the milk back Three quarters of a cup of milk. And the next thing I want to do is add the uh, the uh, oil to it. And I've got a quarter of a <laughs> quarter of a cup of vegetable oil. And uh, I know you've seen a lot of Martha Stewart's recipes. That she uses a lot of oil in her cakes and things, whereas Ina Garten on her baking rarely uses uh, oil, but almost always uses butter for everything, butter and shortening for her. There are certain cakes you need oil for because, and a lot of your quick breads, there's just no use in using butter. Yeah. You want to form a colloid and then add your starches to it and it rises up real nice and beautiful but for this cake because of we want it to stay not so solid for that time period when we're plating the oil is the better fat yeah i can i believe that so what type of oil do you use ellie if you're gonna if it calls for the uh vegetable oil what are you grabbing when it calls for i have oil? three oils that i use in cakes if I'm using citrus, it's almost always olive oil. Okay. And the best olive oil I have. If it's any kind of quick bread, it's always vegetable oil. And then there's a third oil. No one even thinks about it. It does not resonate through your baked good. It is grapeseed oil. Yeah, grapeseed oil. I never even thought about that. It has no flavor whatsoever. It's there. It's bringing the fat properties. It's just not bringing the flavor. Aaron says he still has a few pieces of the German chocolate pound cake in the freezer. You could probably hurt someone if you hit it with hit them with it. Substantial. Right. So they want to uh, combine these uh, all of these ingredients now, and they want me to uh, basically beat this for about a minute here. Okay. Beat for a minute. Now we're going to add the vanilla and the egg. And I'm going to give a little hint, they tell you to put a little hint of either lime or lemon. And I don't have a, a fresh lemon right now. So what do you got? Well, I've just got a little bit of real lemon, just a spoon of real lemon. That'll work. Yeah, it'll be, uh, I think that'll work okay. Let's mix that a couple more minutes. I'm not hungover, Nicole. Nope. And good, uh, good afternoon to you. Should say good evening in the uh, UK. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and add my teaspoon of vanilla now on here. And this is where people hate on me, Allie. So give me some give me some uh, 
give me some protection here. Tell them about the uh, artificial versus the natural. There it is. All right, and I'm going to add my uh, an egg in here. And if you're not good at uh, cracking eggs, just do it over a bowl. And put it in. Oh, boy. Look at that egg shell. And all in one cake where you throw it all together. Pretty much what she's doing right now is kind of an all-in-one cake. Yeah, which you I kind of like. All in one bowl. Yeah, which I kind of like. If you if you just if the mood strikes you in mid-afternoon or early afternoon, and you think you know this might be a nice, nice, a nice day to have a quick cake. I can't think of anything that's uh, simpler really to put together than this. So clear off a few ingredients. But Ellie, the difference between the artificial and the real vanilla. The tested by Cooks Illustrated. They tested it in baked goods, in puddings, in custard, in cookies, and in a cheesecake. And they determined by a taste test they could not tell the difference. So we're just blending this. The last thing I'm going to do is give this a little bit of a uh, heat. And I always wash my hands after I... I, I know I say wash after I handle uh, eggs and things, so it's just good. Uh, but it has to be, uh, yeah, I just never found, yeah, I guess for good quality. CC says natural vanilla all the way, nicer, more robust flavor, but it has to be a good quality. Yeah, I like so. the one at Costco. You can't go wrong. It's $9. It's a giant bottle. And I go through about three of them when I bake at Christmas time. But for things with less than five ingredients or a custard, I yeah. like Sonoma Syrup Company, the Vanilla Crush, meaning nice. there's some vanilla bean in it. And it's awesome for less than five ingredient That's baking cool. good. Sharon, Simply Southern. Hi, Sharon. It says, lovely countertops. Rosie, did you do them, or were they like that when you moved into the house? This kitchen was, this whole house was a wreck inside, and I still haven't put up the uh, video with all the original pictures and all the all the work that was done on here. And, um, you know, you see a lot of pictures of Wolfie, my uh, dog, that uh, got put down, well, almost two years ago. Now, but I'll put all that stuff up. I'll put all that up there, so it'll become, yeah, all of, and if you go back, all of the uh, kitchen renovation, the installation of the cabinets, all that stuff, there's videos that when the uh, guys, the Chinese crew came in from Oakland and uh, custom cut the countertops, and I had the uh, undermounted sink below, below the uh, granite here, so. Okay, so we pretty much have our uh, batter made. The nice thing about my channel is, I don't know how many videos, over 3,500 on this channel, and God knows how many other on other we channels. We gotta tag this, Rosie. We gotta yeah. tag it so it's baking. We might get the baking crowd in here. Won't that be fun? Oh, boy. <laughs> we could make it the prepper. RV tranny baking craft. There we go. What is what's a tonka bean? A tonka bean, when you take it and soak it in a uh, alcohol, tastes like vanilla, but it is the chemical equivalent to warfarin, and it will make you bleed. <laughs> wow. Jeez. So you have to be careful with Mexican vanilla, because often. They know that we're looking for cheap vanilla, and they will soak tonka beans. Yeah, and tonka beans are illegal in the United States. Just for that reason, huh? Because they're uh, because they... they're warfarin. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So it is a blood thinner. Let's see. Oh my God, Nicole's the oh shit trans RV prepper baking e baking van dwelling troll puppet big titty community. <laughs> Yes, she forgot Nicole. cross dressing. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Natty. Nice to see you. Those who are schnockered. Yeah, I'd like to hear me say, wash those dishes and wash those clothes. 
you might get Jenny Jones following you, Rosie. Woo! I can't wait. You know. All right, it's time to uh, it's time to make our top. And of course, this is an upside down cake, so we're actually going to be preparing the top surface of the cake now. And I have uh, a cast iron skillet that I've used for years. It's well seasoned. You don't use uh, you know scouring pads and things, or else you ruin the seasoning on skillets. And these are like these are like family heirlooms when they're you know they, they have a lot of use and a lot of people are afraid of cast iron skillets. But what I size find skillet they, do you have, Rosie? What's that? What size skillet do you have? I think this is a uh, I think this is a nine inch nine inch skillet here. So and how deep are we? Uh, this is probably two and a half inches deep. This one gonna be close. Yeah, it's we're gonna be dropping it like uh, off the building here when we go to turn it over. That's for sure. Do we so, have something to put in the oven to put that on top of? Uh, yeah, I have a pan that's in there. Yep. I mean, I have a, a baking sheet. So good because we're gonna be close in okay. volume. Okay. It's really going to go up that much, huh, Ellie? But just the one and a third. Uh, you know what? It's like trying to say, is that is that car really going to hit my house? Is that car really going to hit my house? <laughs> and it did hit my house. <laughs> it it could have gone either way. You know, I don't want you to have to. I, see, I've done this. When I tell you about the things that can go wrong, it's because they have already gone wrong. When you do close but no cigar with cake pans, you could end up cleaning baked on on the bottom of your heating element cake <laughs> yeah so my fancy uh fanny said her cast iron skillet is over a hundred years old yep this was basically all, this is what basically all people had and if you ever worry about teflon and all that kind of stuff which i don't particularly uh worry about you know the cast iron is really the way to go now Dealing with the non-stick, but if you have, if you have it properly seasoned and everything, I've never really found that to be uh, to be an issue. So I'm heating it up now, and I've got a quarter of a uh, quarter of a cup of butter that's going in there, uh, melting right now. And as soon as that uh, kind of liquefies and melts, I'm going to remove it from the heat, and I'm going to sprinkle the brown sugar around the skillet. Then I'm going to place the pineapple slices and the uh, cherries, center up the cherries there. And then we're going to pour the batter over top. Don't burn the butter. Absolutely not. I use the lowest heat, and I've never had any issues. And I can actually turn that off right now and move that off of that hot spot and keep stirring that. Now I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle the uh, brown sugar around. I hope you guys can see that okay. Move that around. Make sure to try to get that uh, try to get that spread evenly around on there, so it's not easy. Brown sugar tends to be clumpy. So that looks uh, that looks pretty good. Fun, fun, fun. Having more fun and. A person ought to on the first day of uh, spring. So, okay, I'm pretty much happy with the way the uh, brown sugar has been spread on there, and I might uh, might go grab a little bit more stick on there because I like the brown sugar. And this will melt uh, pretty good. I cut a couple couple spots. I can just use a little bit of a shake there. This is probably a better way to put it on anyway, as opposed to using a uh, cup. This way, I don't have any spots that aren't hit here. Okay, and that's a much more even distribution, and I think that will all melt down. That will all melt down in a second. So, and of course, when the batter goes over top, it's going to cook that too and set that. On the top. Putting that away now. And now we're supposed to go ahead. What's that? You have a whisk? Yeah. Whisk it. Whisk it, okay. I got my wire whisk. Spatula and spread it around. Okay. 
I love the sound of a whisk on a, a cast iron skillet. Here we go. I'll kind of whisk that and uh, spread that around. On there. There we go. That's it. That's a pretty even distribution on there now. So this will also remelt and spread, so it'll it'll be pretty much even, right, Ellie, when it's done. So when it when it becomes a liquid. When some right now it's semi solid. It will become a liquid and it will go everywhere. Now I'm going to uh, go ahead and put uh, put the uh, pineapple slices around here. Our pan. All right. Okay. This is where this is where this cake really gets a beauty treatment, I think, because it's really a it's really a dramatic looking cake and it's almost a cheat because it's pretty easy to make. Famous last words from me, right? <laughs> All right. I'm trying to I'm trying to get them sort of uniformly spread because you know you want this to look well kind of geometrically perfect there. So I'll have this again. My house. All right, now we got our cherries, and I'm going to pull pull the stems here, and uh, basically Can we get one more slice in there, Rosie. Well, uh, you want it packed tight? It, it, you know what? It's something that I always did. I made sure I shoved as much because the pineapple's going to add some juice to the party as well. Okay, we can do that. Let's see if we could get one more in the outer circle. Probably, Shim them can, in. probably can get uh, one more. I just need to redistribute to uh, make sure that the uh, sugar is distributed. We well. have a we have a, a, a costume change on the cake already. There we go. Well, I'm willing to throw another one on if I can make it fit. Yep. Pear tea. There we go. So I'll just re. Kind of reposition. That's Look gonna at be that. Good. That's making now you. that's what you want to see. You want that's it to be pineapple. redolent with pineapple. That's what uh, that's what Ellie calls a fully loaded. Yeah. 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 Juice. That's right, baby. Redistribution right there. Redi see, this is like the Bernie Sa Saunders kind of uh, cake here. We're redistributing the wealth right here. Yeah. No comment about Bernie. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I'm just, uh, just really adding the uh, cherries. I'm de stemming them here. Some are too small. They go in my mouth. So I want some good size. Doesn't that look lovely so far? That is the existential look of the pineapple upside down cake. That the pineapple is a presence. That's why. I thought, you know, we could get another slice in there. Yeah, that's a nice, uh, yeah, they said good call, Ellie. Stellar call, Ellie. They're stuffing up that with, get those. See that? And nobody thought I had any talent. I know how to distribute pineapple, damn it. Oh, come on, honey. I've got no <laughs> how, many of these things, how many of these things you've made before? So. Oh, hundreds. 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 Very good Jersey housewife, so. All right. Oh, God, that word. Not your favorite word. I know. My mother was a housekeeper or a wife or whatever she used to put down on things. And I used to say, oh. All right. I'm going to uh, clean my whisk again. And then I'm going to go ahead and give this one more whisking here. Uh, and then we're going to uh, pour the batter over top here. This is going to have a lot of rise because this has two teaspoons of baking powder, which is quite a lot for, uh, for the volume of flour, one and a third cups of flour that I have in here, which is pretty amazing. Now I'm going to go ahead and move this back over here and you can see I have a pretty good, I'm happy with the distribution of the uh, brown sugar. 
that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and kind of grab the spatula. Grab that and try to work that. Uh, that is beautiful. Can you get a close up of that for these people? Yeah, I can. Unfortunately, I just. Uh, now she needs the selfie stick. Yeah, now I need the uh, selfie stick. So I'm trying to be pretty even with the placement of the uh, batter so I don't have a. I want an even cake. I don't want. I don't want Do something. Do you have a. a uh, a, a regular, not not a spatula like you flip pancakes with, but a uh, yeah. This is a rubberized. Know. This is a rubberized. Yeah. Spatula. I'm, I'm making a list of things that you don't have. <laughs> this is a good one. I uh, we have two great restaurant and cook supply houses here in uh, Santa Rosa. One of them is Myers, and one of them is Rosenberg. And Rosenberg has really good used equipment when restaurants fail. He'll collect and go in and also buy all that crap up. You need an offset spatula. Yep. An offset yep. spatula allows you to take your batter and even it out correctly. The offsetedness of it gives you an added advantage. It's a tool more than it's a thing. It's a tool. Hey, Wayne. Warren, oops. <laughs> yep, we got Warren in the house. So uh, I've had this preheating the oven at three fifty for probably. Uh, I know Mallory. I'm gonna Mallory. I'm gonna be on that, honey. As soon as this cake hits that oven, my my, I will let's be. Let's tap on that. This. Let's tap it. Yeah, let's tap. It. So Jen, wash those dishes over there. <laughs> Over say hi to everybody. Oh, they, my they, they can't hey, see Jen. Your head, so they can't see me. They can't see you. Yeah. They can't see me. Keep going. Can Look up over me. there and say hi. Oh, hi, everybody. everybody. Let's see what we got. Hi, Ellie, Warren, yeah, Juice. Your boyfriend, Warren. Is here. CC, hi, Warren. Yeah, yeah she gave you a little extra zing there. Warren. All right, I'm going to open up the uh, oven now, and in she goes for 45 minutes. And I'll tell you the spooky part. Okay, Warren, thank you for putting that in all the caps for me. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and Jen, pause. live from the cakey. <laughs> all right, I've got that sitting on top of a pan inside there, and I have a convection oven with the light and the fan on it. It has an internal. So we're going to go ahead and set our timer, and our timer is about as unreliable as I am. So about 1230, this is going to come out. The Somehow recipe calls for 45 minutes? Yep. And you're using full convection? Yep. I'm going to check it at 35. Yeah, I'm going to put it 30 exactly. I was going to say I generally will run that down about eight minutes below that amount because it is convection, and you can definitely overcook. Oh, yeah. Yep. So. Convection increases your temperature by five degrees per hour. Yeah, so it's all uh, it should be pretty good. Yeah, I'm hoping it turns out good, Mallory. The only thing, of course, I'm worried about is this cast iron pan is heavy. Uh, and, you know, I have to do the flip, but it's not going to be dropping, I think, more than an inch or so. You can so. always chicken out, Rosie, and just do a plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can do a plate, too. Yeah. That would be not the highest degree of difficulty. And then next no, time we make I it. Don't have a, I don't have a plate that large to tell you the truth so you don't have a nine inch plate uh i bet you do i probably do somewhere around here I have to look around so this Most is the dinner part. plates are at least nine and a half ten inches in diameter so while you are chatting away and mallory williams is regaling you with uh tales of, tales the, of the sink i'm gonna make mallory williams really happy now Go ahead and get all this stuff washed and dried. W A R S H T D. Washed and dried. I like to fill half of my sink with soapy hot water, and while I'm baking, I just throw things in the soapy hot water. Yeah, I have this. No uh, one can see. Bowl that I use. I love my big mixing bowls. I have this bowl I use. To stop getting excited. Prepare the. Just gets excited when you say soapy and hot. 
You know, I've never heard of it. I don't know what clotted cream is. I just, I'm not sure. Is clotted a- cream is a British thing. It's really double thick whipped cream. I mean, it's almost cream cheese kind of thick. Yeah. So, uh, and it's, it's really creamy. Sounds interesting. It's good one scones. I think our people here like whipped cream and stuff like that. So this cake can you can do anything with it. I've done you know sweetened whipped cream on it. I've done sweetened sour cream on it. My husband will put ice cream on anything. Nice. He's what just is weird. Favorite flavor of ice cream. Mr. Ellie? Yeah. Mr. Ellie's a chocolate dude. I like chocolate too, but my favorite is butter pecan. That's my favorite. Uh, I'm a purist. I do not like stuff in my ice cream. So I, am, like I like vanilla too, but I can't find, I can rarely find a vanilla that I enjoy eating. Oh, it's expensive. You know what? Maybe it's time to get the Cuisinart ice cream maker and we can do that. Yeah. Do you think that that's a good one? The I have two of them. <laughs> Hiya, David. Thank you. David says he loves me. Thank you. It's just my kitchen skills you love. All right. Just joking. Okay. So I'm just vanilla is like me. Purist. Yeah. Like the spirit. Yeah, vanilla is my favorite too, and I like a French vanilla. I like that extra creamy. This would be the thing that you would use the real vanilla in. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's front and the bean. It's front and center and prominent. Just, that's just giving a flavor to this pineapple cake. You know, I could have used coconut flavor. I have coconut extract too. I could have used that. Been great. Yeah. That'd have been. Used, yeah, I could have used coconut though. And a little the, shot of rum in the the uh, brown sugar, and that would have been the the uh, yeah, what do they call it? The pina delicious. colada cake. But like, uh, but like most bakers, the first time out of the gate, I'm gonna pretty slavishly follow the recipe to see how much I like it out of the, you know, when it's completed, just to see. Then I start doing my own hacks and tweaks on it. Some yeah, people say shredded coconut in, use coconut milk. There's so many different things. Pineapple juice. There's so many variations I saw. And one of the interesting things when you do a lot of baking like I do, you go in there and explore the way that people put their own twist. I mean, remember, you're taking flour, butter, and sugar for the most part and making a cake. Well, it's amazing how many million variations there are on on doing that. So it's very interesting for me. Uh, that's the fun of that's the fun of it to see the way people tweak stuff. You don't even know have to make ice cream when, when you have the ice cream maker you can make sorbet which is just fruit out of the backyard right there on the rancho yeah now you told me that really there's no american gelato maker that's decent correct you have to import one from like italy or there's expensive models they're in the four to six hundred dollar range good lord and this is also, you can make a couple of quarts of uh, gelato. Yeah, once, <laughs> once a year at that, yeah. you got to be really into it. And as much as I would like to tell you I want to sit around all summer and make gelato, I don't. So I always buy some once or twice during the summer. I will make sorbets. I will make ice cream. But when I want gelato, I go to a gelato place or I get it at the grocery store. Yeah. It, there is a place in Philly called... Capigiro, they make some of the best gelato ever. And they sell it nationwide, usually at Whole Foods. Let's see, David DeRoche says, Rosie, you should have a YouTube dinner and invite us all over. Everyone brings a dish. I'll bring Maine lobster. Well, I love lobster. There we go. There we go. That's it. And uh, lobster is never more affordable than it is right about now and then again in September. Yeah, uh, Cece says could have used some coconut milk in the battery. Yeah, some people will actually also put shredded coconut. But I've seen so many variations on on the making of this cake, probably more than most ever other cakes I've ever uh, ever seen. So it is one of the oldest cakes that ever appeared in a book, and it was because Robert Dull, in order to 
you know, sell his new thing. Hey, I canned up some pineapple in rings. He posted the recipe and then it went to a ladies magazine. It also appeared quite w weirdly on the bag of gold medal flour. Was that in the 1920s or when do you think? That yeah. That okay. Cause I know that uh, pineapple upside down cake from my research was really like the hot cake in the 1920s for, uh, for people. So, it was pineapple when it first became available publicly was a fancy food. They, there was appetizers that had pineapple cakes yeah. that had pineapple pineapple ooh, drinks everyone was like ooh, fancy fancy so it was uh, considered exotic back then if you can even imagine that so dole actually created the market for uh this product by the end user market by coming up with uh, stuff like that so because you have to you have to think about it the first time that you ever buy a, a whole pineapple and you take it home you're like what the hell am i gonna do with this thorny ass thing <laughs> Yeah. And most people, okay. they just hack at it because they don't know. The wonderful thing is if you can buy it, or like in Whole Foods, they core it and put the whole entire cylinder in a container. Here, take it home. What I like is I bought one of those gadgets. It's a pineapple core. It's stainless steel. It cost me about 18 bucks. My husband takes it. Wax the top off and goes boom, 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 six times. Done. That's pretty good skill. It is. A, it's a gadget. And they make them in plastic, which I don't recommend. You'll end up breaking it. Get the stainless steel one. It will never let you down. Yep, get the stainless yeah, steel. Love, I love stainless steel stuff. In the, uh, I, always, I never economize on kitchen gadgets and utensils because I find it's foolhardy to use shitty stuff like really thin pans and crappy uh, crappy cookware. It just comes back to bite you in the ass. Oh, Rosie, I need a 12-step program about cookware. You have no idea. <laughs> oh, I know. You just buy shit to have it. It was a good price, right? Not, not even that I buy shit to have it. Once you get a taste of really good cookware, you're like, yeah, and I want, I want. Yeah, yeah, you do. And you find out that I, on one hand, I'm a minimalist because I like stuff uh, simple. But on the other hand, I'm, I'm very drawn to kitcheny gadgets and stuff like that. So, all right, entertain the troops a minute. I will be back in a second. Fantastic. So. Who in here has made one of these pineapple upside down cakes that Rosie's made today? Anyone? Type two, 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 two. Anyone? I know Sharon Simply Southern must have because in the South, pineapple upside down cake is something that you eat on Sunday. Anyone? Bohemian Grove. <laughs> I've made hundreds of these. Rosie is a somewhat prepper. Cece, I know you're bacon. I know you are. David? See? And I think people bake them because they're an easy cake to bake. And it sort of looks fancy with the pineapple and the maraschino cherries. And I guess for some people, they think any kind of cake is just, oh, you spent all this time in trouble when you really didn't. That was an easy cake to bake. Juice. How's the weather over there? We're cold. It's like 38 degrees outside. I'm expecting it to snow. Yesterday it snowed. Today it's going to snow any time. Yeah, yeah, we've got quite a bit of rain started this morning. This is a nor'easter. They even gave it a name on the Weather Channel. Yeah. I'm yeah. just lucky I don't live more north. Is it snowing, Ellie? It isn't now. Yesterday it snowed most of the damn day. Wow. 
and the dogs were having a ball. My dogs love snow. They are snow doodles. It says a wintry mix will start at 345. All right. And that's from rain to snow or from snow to rain going to be? It's going to shower. It's going to snow. I don't think any of it's going to stick because the five-day forecast for most of New Jersey includes a 70-degree day. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know I'd why. it's going to be 70, and I'm thinking to myself, snow, 70 degrees, what the hell? It's Crazyville. Yeah, I'll take that. Good Friday is going to be thunderstorms. I also like those. Makes me happy. Okay, thunderstorms make you happy. Dave DeRoche says over a foot of snow is headed for Maine. Yeah, they're getting more than us. We'll get like about three inches maybe total, but it's raining the whole time. So I yeah. don't know if that means that it'll disappear. This is why I didn't wash my car on Friday. I figured snow was going to come, so the hell with it. There we go. There's... uh. Uh, let's see, Mallory Williams. Mallory, I've cleaned every dish in the sink. You'd be very happy about that for uh, your Neatness Counts campaign for Rosie's uh, kitchen and environment there. Uh, thus making Ma Mallory happy. Cece says, call me nuts, but I miss real snow. I like it one time a season, and I think that's about it because I'm not, I'm not crazy about that. Shoveling and slipping on icy sidewalks and all that. So. We never do that, Rosie. We have all kinds of things to make sure that doesn't happen. I can't begin to tell you what fun me and Mr. Ellie have with grit in the path. And I bought him ice slip-ons that go on his shoes so that he doesn't fall because he's Jerry Lewis. <laughs> I married Jerry Lewis. <laughs> That's if there is one quarter size piece of ice on that the driveway, his ass will find it. <laughs> That's it. That's funny or nail. And you know, I told him I'm not staying married to a cripple, so he's gonna have to be careful. Yeah, you gotta protect your uh, hips, right? You don't want that hip fracture. I'm taking a peek yeah. at I'm not gonna open Men, it up. They're so fragile. I don't want to deflate the uh, cake. This is a uh, five burner Fisher Paykel, 36 inch uh, gas range. The reason I bought it, it has the center watt burner here. And if you watch the Super Bowl video I did this year, I I used I the saw it. I, I used the wok and I prepared the uh, shrimp with the Old Bay and the seasoning in the wok and stuff. And it makes it so easy to evenly coat everything. That's why the Chinese. Use it. A, it gets much hotter than a regular pan because there's more surface area with flame hitting it. But you have to be very good about working it and careful too with oils and things like that. But, uh, I love having a wok burner in the middle there. So, Fisher Paykel. Yeah, Ellie till paralysis do his part. <laughs> I know. You know. I'm the one who's supposed to fall apart first. I'm older. <laughs> These choices were well made. <laughs> I like uh, when Ellie says that uh, she got Mr. Ellie the snow pants. So I married that guy. <laughs> Looking out, watching him do this snow blowing and the snow clearing. <laughs> I married that guy. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, you're on. Yeah, there you go. That is my Christmas tray for when we had Christmas Eve guests. I baked everything on it. Boy, that looks good. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Uh, we have the same countertop. Yeah. My first granite was called Verde Fontaine. It was green. And then last year in April, they brought me samples, four or five of them. And every sample we tried... When we got down to this sample, he said to me, this is the one that matches your kitchen. And I said, Rosie's going to shit. I've st stolen her granite. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried. I looked at black and stuff, but it dramatically shrunk the look of the, you know, it dramatically sh uh, shrink the look of the uh, kitchen. So this went beautifully with the, uh, of course, the flooring came last, putting down the uh, porcelain uh, uh, tile here, but also with the uh, 
green on the uh, walls and things, so it all works pretty pretty good in here. Thank you, Juice. And uh, Ellie, too. Love your granite. Yep. You have good countertops. So. My kitchen's important to me because it's uh, not only the place where my family likes to gather and we have parties and whatnot, but it's a tool. Yep. And uh, It's an important tool. I don't think there's there's a few things more satisfying than putting something in front of somebody and they're saying, wow, this is just amazing. You know, this is so good. And, I uh, still think it's funny that that any of it and uh, let's see what else I've got here. I also send out gifts of uh, things from my kitchen to people that I love and care about. Yep. And they look forward to it. I get thank you. This is uh, typically the box that I send out to friends close by, neighbors and whatnot. Wow. Wow. That is 18 kinds of cookies. Man. My goodness. Kind of leaves me speechless there. Get ready for the Christmas fair. I kid you not when I tell you that I take on cookie baking very seriously. I even made the jam that went into over to the right. You can see these things are called piffles with jam in them. I made the jam that goes in them. Yeah, it looks like the jam inside of them. And, uh, they are wonderful. What, why don't you talk about some of the cookies that are in there and uh, just describe some of them. Up to the top is your, your upper left is a Jen favorite, the Snickerdoodle. And then yeah. next to it is a Viennese butter cookie. I put a little chocolate button in the middle. Uh -huh. Then next to that is an almond macaroon. Not a macaron, a macaroon. Biscotti, two different kinds. Right there, there's a, a pistachio cranberry with orange. And then there's one that I make it so it tastes like a cappuccino and it has chocolate drizzle on it. Then are kiffles. Kiffles are an Eastern European cookie. They fold over and they're filled with jam. After that is the Italian tricolor cookie, which is actually three kinds of cake pressed together with jam and then dipped in chocolate. Next to it are ricotta cookies. Underneath that, you've got all your regulars, your oatmeals and chocolate chips. In the middle with the red circle is what's called a linzer tort, which is made with hazelnuts. After that is my mother-in-law's favorite, the pecan snowball. They call them sometimes Mexican wedding cookies. I've heard so them called right. Russian, uh, Russian tea. Russian tea yeah. biscuits. Yeah, yeah, that too. I make those. Next to it is a coconut macaroon. Down there, the pink one is an anise-flavored Italian biscuit. Then after that is the sprinkle cookie. Kids love these things. It's a cookie with sprinkles. Right on, next to that and between the gingerbread men are lemon. They're just little Italian cookies, flavored lemon. Then you have those ones that came off the Hershey kiss bag which is a peanut butter blossom and that's pretty much the box that I send to my neighbors you see it's a bakery box I go and buy them oh that's uh that's an amazing assemblage I'll tell you that Incredible. that takes weeks I bake for three weeks solid well, that's, that's what, 20 that's pounds said, of butter that's when you said uh you said you know in Thanksgiving is like later, everybody. See, <laughs> that, I disappear. I disappear <laughs> and get ready for the company. And then after the company's gone, I take two full days off where I do jack shit. And then I'm right in there. And just like when you're baking for the holidays, you're running a mixer. I run three. So I take it seriously. Three mixers. Wow. I have three. I have my Cuisinart mixer, the same as yours, is down the basement. It's my backup spare. Yeah, for some reason, my Cuisinart, it, that lockdown doesn't keep it down. So it's kind of a pain in the ass. I always have to keep one hand on the top of it and then uh, mix. But it, it does a nice job. I also have the uh, 
squeeze an art chopper attachment in the uh, grinder thing that goes on the top. Uh, it's okay. The reason why, and this is the only reason why it's not in the main rotation, I always buy extra bowls and extra beaters. Every one of my mixers has three and four extra bowls. Cuisinart has not made it easy to acquire extras. They are $75 an extra bowl. Well, when I buy extra bowls for the KitchenAid brand ones, I usually pick them up on eBay and get them for about 20 bucks. If you buy them retail price, they're $39. $75 an extra bowl, and it's because you take that bowl in the Cuisinart mixer and it has that hardware down the bottom where you turn it. That makes them more expensive because they're more intricate to, I guess, manufacture. That's the only reason why. Yeah, you get some nice shout outs from the side chat on those cookies. Yeah, well, I think some, some of the trolls thought I was just bullshitting, so I decided, oh. you know what? I'm going to show you. <laughs> I'm going to show you. I'm not screwing around. I double dog dare anybody to make 18 kinds of cookies in that time period. So will you will you pick one day to do one cookie or will you do like two or three cookies at a time? I try to do three or four a day. Interesting. And uh, this is the next question. How many of them do you make of each, of each variety? Like the, uh, what you call the Mexican wedding or what I know is the Russian they ship well. The ones that ship well, I make a lot of because we have people we send to, relatives and people we're not going to see at the holidays. The cookies that stay close, some of those cookies don't last long, meaning they don't taste good after about seven days. Right. So those are the ones I do last. Not everybody gets everything. Some people don't like weird and fancy cookies. One of my neighbors is just like, oh, well, I've never had. So she gets only the plain kinds. So depending, give or take, I make about at least 144 of each kind, 12 wow. dozen. One grows. Yeah. So it helps to have the 36-inch oven because you got all that rack room. Uh, there you go. Here's Mallory. I knew this would happen. Mallory styling and profiling. <laughs> the Aunt Ellie. Let me tell you. <laughs> Every year, my nieces and nephews send me cards. We love you. Thank you so much. The youngest one said to me last Christmas, she was here Thanksgiving time. We're getting cookies, right, Aunt Ellie? I'm like, uh-huh. She goes, I love them. That's Great kid. But my grandmother did it. Both my grandmothers were real cookie makers. So no, now I, that they're I admire you, it's so easy just to pop a catalog and send somebody a wine, cheese, and uh, oh, yeah. cured meat. So you take the time to uh, to do that. So hats off to you. That's great. It's, it's an art form as well as just a tradition. And, you know, they didn't always look that way. I want to stress this. I was not born with a gift. That is 27 years of baking and, you know, refining. Like Rosie says, you take something. Your, my grandmothers used to write what I call not recipes. I uh, use about eight to ten cups of flour, I think. Yeah, <laughs> and you're yeah. like, oh, crap. I have to figure this out. And you could watch them. And even watching them wasn't enough. So it's what's trial the, uh, and error. What's, what's your, uh, what's the most, which cookie has the highest degree? It looks like the tricolor would be a lot of work to make three different. It, it is and it isn't. And I'll tell you why. I've refined it to where I use one eighth sheet pans, which are six by 10 inches. It's easier to manipulate those and just do it four times than it is to make a half sheet and try to manipulate that gigantic thing. So I make them in bar sections, six by 10. You have to weigh them down. Once you put the jam on them, you have to weigh them down for six hours or overnight. Wow. It's much easier to do the one eighth sheets and make four of those than to make the whole entire half sheet pan and play, let's manipulate this giant piece of cake, which is only an inch thick. 
I've uh, I've made black and white cookies at uh, Christmas time. I have some videos up on my channel. And some other. Yeah, they're really uh, they take some kind of work to. Uh, they do. To Reminds me of burgers. Reminds me of going to burgers. Yeah, burgers. Oh wow, you really took me back to Baltimore there with burgers, cookies, and. I used to like them, but then I got older, and then the thickness of that fudge on top of them, good Lord, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes you get a craving for that, and then after one or two, you're like, yeah, now I remember why. It's kind of cloying. But still, a region, regional cookies are so important. Yeah. Burgers are amazing. We used to have a cookie in... Uh, grade school that I really loved. It was called Dad's Old Fashioned Cookies. And it was like, a, I don't even know how to describe it. I want to say an oatmeal, but a very refined oatmeal, grape nutsy type of, just an incredible cookie. And the only place I ever saw them was around, I never saw them again. I'm sure the company went out of business in the 80s or 70s or 80s. But Dad's Old Fashioned cookies so it was uh, yeah bringing back a lot of memories my mother used to make uh, christmas cookies uh ones with pecan crusted with a little bit of jam in them uh, these are the hardest ones is that the uh meringue cookies or what is it no Abby? they are butter cookies that are piped half chocolate half vanilla they make my arm want to fall off wow and they're, they are also a five-ingredient cookie. So the chocolate has to be good chocolate. You have to use good cocoa, and the vanilla has to be really good vanilla. Yeah, because it's so predominant, there's no place to hide, I guess, with the flavor component on that. You know. I used to do them separately. I would do a vanilla, and I would do a chocolate. My friend said to me four years ago, she's like, just do half and half for crying out loud. <laughs> and I was like, that's a fabulous idea. Well, we got about uh, 12 more minutes to go. And this is cooking away very nicely in there, so I'm happy about that. Just took a little teeny tiny peek, and it's looking good in there. So we got about, yeah, about 12 more minutes to go here. So awesome sauce. Yeah, my, they're talking about the Bohemian Grove, and actually both of my girls worked there for summers, and they were bored out of their skull. It's uh, it pretty boring for the most part. So. What is it, a, a restaurant? Well, it started in the 1920s out of San Francisco. It was kind of a retreat for the high flyer, the one percenters, the movers and shakers of industry and politics to come together in a, quote, informal atmosphere and, uh, you know, put regular uh, play clothes on and, uh, uh, you know, get drunk and do cross-dressing skits, just do stuff that guys do when they get together. Hang it out. Yeah, and, and they bought an 1,100-acre, like, retreat up on the Russian River uh, near Monterio up here beautiful place but it's all because it's skated and it's all controlled by guards and it's all video cameras it, it kind of acquired this reputation of being a place where deals are cut and where where uh, bad deeds are done under cover of uh, this place and there used to, years ago there was much more heavy protesting at the time they'd come up in July for their annual their annual fete there would be all kinds of uh, protesters outside the uh, gate waving signs. And, and as the limousines rolled in, they'd drive up, land at the airport, Sonoma County Airport, or come up from San Francisco by limo. Uh, and it's like Aaron said, most of what you hear about is a bunch of, it's just hoodoo bullshit for people that think anything that isn't overly Christian is overly uh, evil. Or it's like, uh, you know, you know, I love Jen, but she talks about the burning of the carriage with the owl and things, and the symbolism. They have kind of rituals and stuff like that. You're sworn to secrecy. You're not supposed to talk about it. Oh, everything's a fraternity party, for crying out loud. Like, There's a picture of my baby, Rosie. There oh, she there is. is. That's a wolf, right? That is. Yeah, talk us through that. 
This is a 36 inch wolf. It's natural gas. It has the full stainless steel backsplash and the 36 inch vent to the outside above it. You can see my, my little copper pots to the right. These are really tiny. They are much tinier than they look. And this was when the granite was being redone last April. Beautiful, beautiful kitchen, beautiful like I have. I have the, uh, I have kitchen made cabinets and I really like the finish of the wood. I don't know what kind you have, but that stove looks beautiful. And I've found most people that are kind of serious about baking and things, they'll have a 36 inch uh, oven. And I'm sure that's convection, right? Oh yeah. And uh, Janet would come over, and when, when Janet first came here and was uh, using this to prepare, she used to come, where's the, where's the timer, you know, where's the, uh, where's the, <laughs> the, the, timer. the commercial, you know, this is commercial, you know, they, there's no such animal on this thing. Oh, my God, how can you use this thing? Then she tried baking something, so, wow, this is amazing. My grandmother had a stove bigger than this. She had eight burners. This, and my, when I got it, my mother said, you're just going to be just like grandma, aren't you? Because yeah. my mother could use four burners. Yeah. You're, but, you're styling and profiling with that. And you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth about it. I would never do all stainless steel again. You see how clean it is? That's yeah. a full-time job. <laughs> Yeah, the difference between my with the Fisher Paykel is I have a big section of smoked glass on the front of mine uh, with less surface area to get, uh, and of course stainless is uh, difficult, but uh, it sure That weighs beautiful. 455 pounds. Yep. And my, my Lazy Susan is to the left. Do you see it? It's all the way to the left in the corner. Yep. That is because I'm too lazy to walk all the way over. I just want it. I just stand right there, and my think, mies uh, is to the left of the stove. Yeah, that's I think, where I uh, keep my uh, mies. Yeah, I think ours ours probably weighs the same. It took uh, two big beefy guys to uh, dolly it in and uh, put the legs on and all that. But I tell you, I love it. It really. Uh, I just can't imagine. Because I do a lot of baking, I wanted to invest. I wanted to make sure that the stove was front and center, the, the great thing to have, and to have a nice fridge, uh, the side-by-side -side with the freezer down below. So, yeah, I I spent the money in the kitchen for sure with the craft-made cabinets. And it's small, but I managed to get a dishwasher designed in. You did a fantastic job. Yeah, thank you. You really thank did. You. Thank you. So all I mean, when I saw the kitchen... One of the one of the reasons why I followed you was not the kitchen, but when I saw, you know, often people who really take their kitchen seriously are kind of like minded. You know, some people say, Oh, well, look what you spent. It's kind of my hobby. Yeah. So, you know, everybody spends their hobby money a different way. Some people have motorcycles, some people have RVs they spent forty thousand dollars on. I spent forty thousand dollars on my kitchen. Absolutely. I probably spent about 15 in the year, and I don't regret any single penny of, uh, of that, because if you're serious about baking, and I'm not, I'm not as much into cooking as I am, baking is really my prime interest, then you will go for, you will shell out for a good, a really good convection oven, because you will be able to appreciate the difference between what a convection and a well-built 36-inch uh, gas-fired oven does and what a standard 30-inch uh, gas stove does. I, I sometimes go into people's houses, and I live in a housing development, so about one-third the houses are the same model as mine. And I walk into the kitchen and I go, oh, because I forget <laughs> that everybody has... Just a little stove with four cabinets around it and a place for the refrigerator. You know, and I just like, oh, and it feels like somebody kicked me. And I'm like, and I just sit there for a minute because I have so much space. And I don't have so much space. I yeah. took it all up. <laughs> I guess I kind of got inspired by Ina Garten with the way her kitchen was and how serious a baker uh, she She's was. She's tricky. 
Yeah, because she's she worked with the, I think she worked in uh, Nixon and no, I want to say the Reagan or somebody in, in, in the Nixon. energy yeah. department. Yeah, yeah, and then she went and did all of her. Uh, and you said her uh, hobbies. Uh, her husband took a job at Yale, and they bought a house in the Hamptons. And he was the president of Yale Business School. Wow. He's famous, this Jeffrey Garden. And I thought he was, he, why, why, why did I think he was a lawyer? Uh, I don't know. He speaks he well. Was he's a very, Green Beret. He was a Green Beret in Vietnam. She married him. She was all of like 18 or 19 years old. Are you kidding he me? He was her brother's friend. He was a Green Beret? He was a Green Beret. That little man was a Green Beret. <laughs> He looks like a teddy bear. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they were they were sweethearts. She was she said she was seventeen years old when her brother brought his friend home, and she was smitten. Wow! And they got married. The, you know, right after he got orders to go to Vietnam, and she got married to him, and then she became a military. She got a job, working, a government job, and then they moved to New York and he got a job at Yale Business School where he was teaching and she decided to bid on a the Barefoot Contessa which was an established business a little delicatessen pick up your food kind of thing she bid in on it sight in unseen the, in the Hamptons right Ellie in the Hamptons yeah okay and there's not many places to shop in the Hamptons and they are mighty expensive so she bought it sight unseen she ran it. She sold it. She kept the building. She sold the business but kept the building. And she had a, an office above it. And she decided to write a cookbook. And she said, people approached her and said, write a cookbook, write a cookbook, write a cookbook. So she did. And when she did, she had no idea that someone would want her to do a show because she said, I'm short. I'm not skinny. I'm not pretty. Why would somebody want me to do a show? But the show is successful. It has been successful for nearly 20 years. Yeah, I, I enjoyed, I didn't care what she did. I thought she had a great personality. I thought one of the greatest things you could have was an invite to her place to have a beach clam bake or whatever they had up there. I thought that was so awesome. The way that she, she uh, friends on the show. She doesn't ever have anybody but her friends on. But at some point about two years ago, she stopped filming in her own kitchen. She bought the property next to her, leveled the house, built a giant barn, and reassembled her whole kitchen in a studio. It sounds, it sounds almost like Mar it almost sounds like Martha Stewart with Turkey Hill with that, you know, where they acknowledge each other, but if you ever see them together in a public space, it's just not pretty. <laughs> well, Martha Stewart's honestly not been the same since she uh had her stay at the West Virginia Hilton down there. That wasn't it. I'm I'm gonna talk gossip now. Okay, go for it. She was dating one of the Apple guys, and it was almost serious. And she was now, also this, dating a Microsoft wait, guy. Wait a the minute. guy who invented. Are we, are we talking about? Are we talking about Martha Stewart? Are we talking about uh, Ina Martha Garden? Martha Stewart. Martha okay. Stewart was seriously, before she went to jail, she was seriously dating the guy who invented Excel for Microsoft. Wow. And they were serious. And then he decided that he really wanted to have children and he dumped her. And that's when she got really weird. And then when, after she got out, she was dating one of the Apple billionaires. And he dated her for like a season of going to parties in the Hamptons and then he bought a house there and got rid of her. I guess she tried to tell him how to decorate it. <laughs> but she says, when she does conversations, they're like, Martha, do you date? I'm only interested in younger men who are very wealthy. No. And you know, that narrows the pool down when you're 70-something years old. Do you know how shitty that sounds to hear somebody say that? I mean, how shallow can you be She's Stop. pretty shallow. <laughs> She's pretty shallow. And, you know, it's what, what cost her her husband. Her, well, her husband married her assistant. Uh, 
I told you too that one of the things that I did not like about her is she seemed to take simple recipes and try to make them as complex, you know, to overcomplicate sometimes and make. Uh, oh, we them. all agree. Yeah, and I didn't like that. I thought, uh, you know, Ina Garden. I just appreciate. I mean, she seems a little more unassuming and down to earth for as wealthy as her and her husband are. You know what that means, guys? It's time. It's time. So we're gonna pull we even had time for the gossip hour. Yep. Well, time goes fast when you're chewing the fat. So, yeah, Martha Stewart is no stinking good. Well, you know, she thought that she was better than the judicial system. That's a big mistake. When you go in, don't ever lie. It doesn't matter what so you do. Dumb. Don't ever lie to federal investigators. That okay? was so dumb. She would have made money. She should have kept her mouth shut and left it as is. And there's the way we look. We're nice and uh, nice and brown here. Do we have something to test the cake with? Yeah, I can tell you this cake is done. This cake be done. So I can tell by looking at. I can also tell by the smell. So what we're going to do is just let this sit for five minutes. There's a little bit of a danger factor in turning this cake over. So we want it to cool, but not enough that it's going to. Let's get a toothpick in it. Yeah. Not all the way to the bottom, though, because that's going to be wet. So let's get a toothpick in the middle. Yeah, that came out perfectly clean on that. So Cool. That's all good to go, and that looks uh, beautiful. Five minutes? Yeah, we're going to wait five minutes for it to just kind of come back together a bit there. There we go. The moment of truth in five minutes. Yeah, if anybody has to get a drink or pee, now is the time. Now's the time. Yeah, I just put some coffee on. I put a pot of coffee on here. So oh, I this. can see it. Five minutes, and I'm going to take a uh, pee break and wash my hands and come back, and Ellie can entertain the troops here with some more addition, some more dirt. On we need some music Stewart. for this. And you we'll got be back at Rosie's it. Kitchen on the Rancho in just a couple minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> Rosie flips the cake in five minutes. This is like watching Chris Angel. He's going to escape in five minutes. If anybody has to get a drink or pee, now's your time. Grab a snack, get more comfortable. You're going to watch the flipping of the cake. Yeah, Chris Angel. I think that guy's crazy. Did we lose Mallory? Mallory, where are you? Take a deep breath. There you are. Yep, pops the coffee on. I always like to talk a while, while even after it's poured out here and set. And so we've got about two more minutes here. And I'm going to holler down to Mr. Ellie to see if, if oh, what I have in the stove oh is Oh, my good. goodness. <laughs> what? What? Are you afraid? <laughs> Are you guys ready for the kitchen disaster? Uh, See, this is why yeah. the first time you should always do it in a cake pan because that handle is great and not so great at times yeah. like this. Uh, yeah, I'm a little... Uh, no way to get around it. You're not going to hold it in the handle. You're going to hold it on the other two sides. Just like it was a cake I'm gonna, pan. I'm gonna, I need this. I kind of need the handle. Damn, that thing's hotter than hell. I told you. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. And now Rosie will attempt from the high wire. Yeah, that no, should come out. I don't have to take a knife around the edge on the sides or anything. It should still be warm enough. Usually when I rest a cake, it's no less than 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. So this should still be warm enough. Okay. But you, know, you can always take, take your butter knife. Put it slowly down the side and push back and see if it's stuck. I doubt it, though. It's sitting there in syrup. 
No, it feels very, uh, feels loose. very, uh, very loose actually. There you so. go. Yep. Yeah, so we shall see if half of it drops down and half doesn't. So about one more minute. We're in the one minute. Don't count. have to worry if some of it sticks because of the syrup. You can kind of just like modeling clay, fudge it all in there. That's it. You know, even mistakes taste good. I think I think it should be my new tagline. Even mistakes taste good. Well, it sure it sure smells amazing. That's for sure. It, describe the aroma. Uh, I, I definitely smell a cake, and then I also also have a pineapple, like a like a what would I say a, a glazed pineapple smell in here, like you would have it. Uh, when you're doing an Easter ham or something like that. So, you know, I'll put myself on presentation so you can see me uh, get whacked here. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, oh. <laughs> she wore all That's the best like, things to get a leg burn. I love it. Yeah, I need my LAPD riot shield on my face here when I flip this, uh, flip this thing over. So, well, here we go. Don't freak out, guys. This could be the uh, this could be a kitchen Is disaster. Is it five minutes over? Yeah, five minutes are over. Could be All right. A kitchen disaster of uh, epic uh, epic proportion here. Okay, and there it is. Okay, so I'm lowering it down now. Easy. Oh, and there it is, guys. We can only see a piece of it. There it is. Oh, that is pretty. Woo! Let me tell you, brother. <laughs> that is uh, that was the, that was one of my top five most nerve-wracking uh, moments there in uh, baking. Let me get the I uh, can't see the side chat. Make sure these uh, guys saw that. Yep, there it is. There she Wait is. Wait a minute, ring. Oh wow! You don't know how happy that makes me right now. There that is, is a fantastic first effort that on is. on the pineapple upside down cake. That looks really. And awesome. I hate to say it, Rosie, but that stuff tastes good warm. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Jen at? <laughs> <laughs> Jen, <laughs> she's over there. It, it tastes the good room temperature, but it tastes good warm. Well, I have to say, I'm I'm happy. I'm really happy that that uh, that bad boy was beyond. Uh, you know, I don't. Why am I? So, why was I so nervous about? Uh, this the first time you attempted it, I told you you got this. Yeah, I, I think it's the flip from the pan that freaks me out. Everybody, and you picked the highest degree of difficulty of a cake stand to put it on. Yeah, well, I'm not the smartest uh, cookie in the back. So. I think it was fantastic. Yeah, sure that good. I'm just going to put some hot water into the uh, The pan. top is properly caramelized. You have yeah, the right yeah. amount of rings. Now, that. can you picture it with one less ring? It wouldn't look as even. Yeah, it wouldn't look as nice with one less ring, that's for sure. I had to say something. <laughs> Well, you, you spoke up and you were, thank you, uh, thank you, 52. Thank you, everybody, for Warren and everybody, uh, everybody for uh, for that. So we've been, uh, I'm going to go about another hour on the hangout here, just a little after uh, after chat, just to give you a look. Ellie, I'm happy about the distribution of the brown sugar, too. It's pretty. So, yeah, I think your idea about whisking and moving whisking it. Whisking with sugar is important, hot sugar especially. Yep. So that was Look really that. good. Really good. So, and uh, as Ellie says, this was invented by uh, Dole. Yeah, Ellie gets credit too on this one. Ellie uh, will tell you this was invented by Dole in the 1920s to sell pineapple because they found a way to core. What was it? A coring machine? Machine. This this cake idea, I think, was Drew. Drew's idea. Yeah. And it was a good one. It's a good cake to try if you aren't used to baking cakes because A, it's showy, B, it's easy, and the hardest part is getting it out of the pan. 
Jen's going to come over. She's got to give her. Uh, she's got to give her approval here. <sighs> yep. There we go. Ooh, Pineapple nice. upside down cake. Great. Great. Smell. There we go. Mm, that smells good. Yeah. Heavenly. You know, it seems springy to me Ooh. on the first day of spring, Kelly. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. This was the the uh, coffee cake that everybody made when they got a call. Oh my God, everybody's coming over, and you'd run to the kitchen, grab that can of pineapple and your cherries. Get that batter together in one bowl, shove her in the oven, because you can serve this warm. Whereas the other cakes, you got to sit them and ice them. And this is a nice coffee cake. Yeah, those other cakes, they actually got to go down and uh, cool off. And then, you know, let me ask you this, Allie, because you've made a lot of cakes and things. When you're working that uh, crumb coat, and keeping those, let's say you're having a white icing, like a coconut cake before you, well, something is maybe a vanilla buttercream frosting. And you don't want to get that, uh, you don't want to get your uh, crumbs all in that. What's, what do you do? I freeze my cakes every time. Wow. About 30, 25, 30 minutes in the freezer. And then I always ice my cakes frozen and there's a degree of moistness that comes from a thawed cake that you cannot reproduce in a fresh cake wow, so here's the secret if i was baking for easter and this year i am not i would have this weekend made my coconut cakes and popped them in the freezer and i would have frosted them frozen then you just leave them out on the counter the icing will freeze to the cake hi marty now that's a cool tip. Hi, Marty. Nice to see you. Most bakeries do the same thing, Rosie. They do rounds of baking of cakes, and then they pop them all in the freezer. And every week they take out, like, every so many per day that they think they need in the case, and they frost them. Yeah, you're getting a lot of people like, uh, well, kind of, uh, you know, like me. I'm a little blown away. Let me say hi to Marty Day Drifter. Nice to see you, honey. The cake that benefits the most is chocolate. When you freeze a chocolate cake, it gives it a degree of moisture that just cannot be reproduced any other way. Wow. That sounds believable. I never yeah, My mother always asked me, how do you get all this cake baking done? Like, May, we're going to have this big party. I'm going to have to make lots of cakes. I mean, I'm going to order a birthday cake, but I'm going to make... A bunt cake and a fruit cake and this other stuff, you know, with fresh blueberries and lemon and stuff. I am going to do all that two weeks before these people ever get here. Just for those of you that are just hitting the uh, hitting a chat, welcome to you. We just uh, put out Ellie about it. Uh, really got everybody get a good look at this cake. Rosie did first time out. Beautiful. With Coach Ellie here, so about an hour and fifteen minutes to knock that cake out, which is not bad. I mean, you could do it in an hour if you didn't babble like I do uh, making it. So, like Ellie said, if company is coming over, and uh, thanks, Warren, if company is coming over, it's like <laughs> it's, a, it's a good cake that you can knock it out. And, uh, it's and when people come, it's warm. You know, coffee's on. You're ready to go. And you could probably sit around the house doing your hair and putting on your makeup in between it. Yep, get your get your Buffon's hairdo all ready for your company. Got your Aquanet out. <laughs> Real Jersey girl style. So. You got your phone in one uh, under one one uh, part for your chin. I'm telling you, I'm making this cake. I only have 25 more minutes. They're gonna be here. Yeah. No, Juice, you're always welcome to visit. So. My Oklahoma pal there. Yeah, you make it small, so I might uh, go ahead and cut you a piece of this and have her uh, try. Taste the warm pineapple upside down cake. That is that is the real marker for this. Warm. That's it, warm. So um, wait a couple more minutes and uh, it'll still be plenty. Uh, Jen, you got a coffee? Yeah, I got coffee. I just put a batch on, so... I take care of my Missy Jen, let me tell you, brother. 
She looks pretty good. She's every weekend. She's got a cake. Yeah, she's, uh, yeah. she's happy. And then she has something to nibble on during the week. And of course, I'm fatter now, so I just look at it. I have a little slice on uh, Saturday, on Sunday. You have to taste your own cake for quality assurance purposes. Absolutely. So. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Let's see. Aaron <laughs> says when I make rum balls, I freeze the uh, cake. Soaked in rum first. And exactly. Flavor all the way through. I never in a million years would have imagined freezing cake would be on anybody's agenda for, for uh, baking. I never knew that it was a thing. I used to do it out of necessity because when I worked, when I had my own business, I worked like freaking hours out the yin yang. I did it so that I could produce a beautiful cake for, like, say, Easter. I would bake everything for Easter, and we'd have the whole fam over. And I invited one of my friends, which was a mistake, and she didn't work. And her husband's like, how come she can work and do all this baking, and you don't ever make anything? And then she rode my ass for days. Oh, oh you God. had to make everything, didn't you? Yeah. But it was hard work. Entertaining. You know it is. Hard work. Well, the one thing I appreciate about scratch-made cakes is you're not getting any uh, preservatives. Of course, they have no shelf life to them. But what do you care? I mean, you're, they're gone within. You can always freeze a cake, uh, which you don't need. But I just appreciate there's, you know, natural ingredients and there's not uh, sorbitols and all these weird uh, preservatives and things on it. So. Those are things they put in the cake to get the moistness that if you yes. just froze it, you could get. <laughs> uh, let's see. Jen eating upside down pineapple <laughs> cake with a huge smile. I don't know if I can take the excitement. I don't know if I can take it either, Warren. You're about <laughs> ready to get muted out of here today. <laughs> just joking. How long will this cake last in the fridge? That, um, I think it'll be gone before it's stale. Yeah, I don't think it's going to last too long. And I don't know if I'd refrigerate it as opposed to put the top on this and then uh, just have it uh, available for uh, eating once it's totally cooled down here. Because you don't want to put a top on if it's warm or else it condenses moisture up on the top and you have the soggy bottom. And nobody likes the soggy yeah, bottom. Yeah, you don't want moisture on that cake. Nope. Don't want moisture at all on there so all right well jen get your coffee i'm going to cut you a piece of this cake now thus making you a very happy girl here. So, let's go ahead and cut a piece of this bad boy for you let's get you a good uh really good piece of uh, pineapple here Okay, and that slices up real good here. And you can see I'll go ahead and uh, plate that for Jen. Yes. And that looks really good. All uh, all done within there. Uh, pretty, pretty. Yep, very pretty for, uh, for serving. So I'll give the uh, Missy, you can grab yourself a fork on in. Give that a whirl whenever you like. So that turned out real good. Have myself a little taste of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> there she goes. One is trying to go away on that. <laughs> There's Rosie testing for quality assurance purposes. <laughs> yeah. She had to pull yourself in there. Give it a whirl. It looks good. Uh, it's plenty moist. No. So, all right. Here goes the Missy Jan, the uh, Norwegian princess right here. Hi, that first wow, one. Wow, it's cake. really nice and soft. Yeah. It'll be like a nice soft cake there, so. Mm. Serve them warm. Mm. We've never had a cake. I guess the pumpkin pie was slightly warm that we made, which was an awesome pie. How do you like that? Good. Ah, yummy. Good. Glad you're How's the glaze, Jen? 
Talk about the glaze. So you got your brown sugar, yeah, and your pineapple there. No, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's as good as you get for, uh, yeah, Aaron says I'd probably make a little butter, brown sugar, and pour roses syrup to a whipped cream or ice cream, yeah. You could add a <laughs> tablespoon of liquor to that syrup in the, the skillet, or if you were using a pan, the pan, and it would only enhance it. But well, I would use more than a tablespoon. Well, like you said, you want to you wanna knock back the cook time because you're in a convection oven. So this is yeah. still mighty moist, this, uh, this cake inside. It's plenty moist, don't you? And there's no... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's good warm, don't you think so, Jen? I always love when the cake is still warm. Mm -hmm. Comfort food. Because I think then that's that's the best time to eat the cake. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Cece mm -hmm. says, I love warm apple pie with cheddar melt on top. Interesting. I've never had cheese on an apple pie. Yeah, the top. Before. There's lots of recipes for putting cheddar in the, the crust, pie. too. The brown sugar coating is really nice. Yeah, we all like the warm, moist. So all things told, Rosie, not that hard of a cake to make. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a leap of faith. And like I said, making it on the cake stand is not the most intelligent thing in the, on the face <laughs> of the earth because it adds with the two handle and the handle and stuff. I wouldn't do that again. Um, not the first time out. Oh, hell no. And I'll probably go out and actually shop for a 12-inch a uh, uh plate and it's a lot easier to put that uh that bad boy on so oh let's see so the nice thing is the uh topping is not overbearing enough and it blends really in with all the other flavors the uh pineapple flavor and then the uh bottom the dough has its own flavor so it's a really nice composition of different flavors and they all blend into each other really nicely. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, the, the cake itself, you, you know, Ellie, it's just a standard vanilla flavored batter. Yeah, it's, cake. it's meant just to be the friend that holds the hand yeah, of the exactly. Cake. It's not. It's not meant to be the star of the uh, operation there, which is kind of unusual for cakes because it's usually most people are going to judge you by the cake itself as opposed to the. Uh, uh, toppings and things like that, but uh, when those pineapples cook and that brown sugar, it just infuses them with that caramelization that um, I think it's probably pretty amazing on that. Give me a little piece of just this. This is a, a cake this that small, as a, small, small, small. Yeah, right. You could use those figs. You could you you could use the figs upside down. Mm -hmm. well, let me tell you, son, brother, this is the best. Let me tell you, that's good. Pineapple upside down cake I've ever Pears. had in my whole life. Pear upside down, plum upside down. Any kind of stone fruit would work. <laughs> All right, bounce Warren out of here. I need a cigar now. Thanks, Rosie. <laughs> Warren. <laughs> so, what do you think, Rosie? I think that was an amazing taste on that uh, cake. You know that what I might be tempted idea. to do? You know what I might be tempted to do, Ellie, is uh, spike that brown sugar up in the bottom of the pan with that butter. I might spike that with some, uh, uh, maybe a little hint of allspice or a cinnamon. So I was going to say, but we always try it the first way, the way it's written. Yep. So yeah, a pinch of cinnamon doesn't hurt. There is a thing that I get from Penzi's called baking spice. Mm -hmm. It has all those things in it. A little uh, anise, a little allspice, a little cinnamon. You take a pinch of that. Nobody knows what it is. They just know it's there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I like I like those kind of things that people have a hard time identifying uh, what it is. I'm just going to entertain the truth again. I want to get a cup of coffee. Here, so. This is really incredible. <laughs> But I can tell you something, any kind of cake, pie, 
uh, that Rosie girl makes is out of this world. She likes the coconut, uh, my coconut cake. The lemon pie meringue, the coconut, pumpkin pie, all of them. Oh my goodness, for myself. Yeah. Plus, Bobby comes over. Bobby does a lot for us and stuff, so it's our chance on the Sunday to give him a little something, a little, little, uh, little gift back to him. Oh, I bet he'd love that cake. Yeah, every time I hear her talking about bacon, I'm like sunk myself. Ooh, because for the next three, four days, I'm having cake or pie or something. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, uh, I have to say, Ali is probably the most elegant, one of the most but elegant, yeah, you know, yet simple. Oh, people ooh and ah when you take that out. And every once in a while, you come upon a person who's like, I don't like coconut. And they yeah. always have to say it after you bring the cake out. It's like, okay, you anticlimactic motherfucker. You know who that is? You know who that is? That's Janet. Janet. Get out. Janet can't stand coconut. Many times I wanted to make for like Thanksgiving or uh, Christmas dinner at her place. I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to make a coconut cake. Uh, her. I, I don't like coconut. I'm like, holy hell. I know. Everybody's got one of those. So this is why for Easter I make a coconut cake and then I make something almond for those who don't like coconut. It's like uh, <laughs> just get in your car and go to hell home. Zeus says you're friends with and he like was a him. sharer. She'd look at the coconut cake and go, oh, it's, it makes me loathe coconut. It just makes me want to throw up in my mouth a little. And I thought, I'm going to attack you with this cake knife, bitch. I'm going to get get your fucking car and go home. After, after about two, three years of listening to that, you know, she would look at or she'd see the cheese on the cheese dish that she didn't like. Oh, Gouda. Oh, it makes me wretch. After <laughs> after about three years of... And, you know, she was a good friend. It was really hard to do this. We stopped inviting her. And wow. so she wrote me an email, and she's like, what's with the shine? You know, we shined her off. Yeah. And I said to her, you use the word loathing in reference to something I spent hours doing. I'm like, think on that. <laughs> Give it a nice hard thought. That's what you call an Ellie. Uh, that's what you call an Ellie beatdown, right there. It's what my mother-in-law would say. Sometimes life is lessons Jesus wants you to learn. <laughs> so, <laughs> hi, Mr. Grant. Hi, Mr. Grant. Just having a little uh, post uh, baking uh, yeah, celebration it here. Yeah, it that is a beautiful display of the cake with the, with the they call it the money shot with the cut out, the money shot. So, yeah. That's uh, I've just that's one of my joys in life is baking, 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 uh, baking breads, pies, and uh, cakes. That's the big thing. Cookies, uh, you know, Ellie's the preeminent. I think uh, cookie. Queen. I'm a cookie Keebler elf around here. Yep. <laughs> and I have to say, why don't you put up your uh, shot again of what you make I for a uh, presentation box? Which one? Uh, the box. Warren, this is your final warning, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> poor Warren. We're torturing poor Warren. Yeah, he's uh, tweaking my knobs here. So yeah, put up your. Uh, let me put. Let me get my. Let me get off of present for me. Sorry, Warren. I'm going to take Missy Jen out of the picture here for a second. So go ahead, Ellie. Show that. Uh, I just figured out how to use that today. How do you use it? The screen share. Yeah. It says there's a green arrow, and it allows you to share what you're viewing. There it is. Say something so it comes back to you. Oh, okay. This is the box. Some of my neighbors, they're really good friends. This is what I uh, send them, which is a, I think this box is like 16 or 18 kinds of cookies. And I make them all. I mean, I'm just thinking to myself how happy I would be to get 
I'm not I'm not pimping myself for an alley basket. I'm just saying if I was a friend of yours and and uh, I mean I am a friend of yours, but I'm saying local and and uh, I mean that would be one that'd be probably be one of the most memorable things. Yeah, that we'll we right to live uh, next door. My next door neighbor paces when she knows that I'm boxing stuff up. She I can see her from my kitchen to hers. She paces the floor because she diets like crazy. <laughs> and she's a beautiful woman i mean she doesn't need to lose weight but when she knows that box is coming she paces <laughs> and i see to me after you've made all of that it's like ah i don't want to taste it i don't want to look at it but people get excited and i remember when i was a kid when my grandmother would give us the box i would get excited well it really is a beautiful uh uh just a spectacular uh presentation and when you think that you make uh 18 um, that you probably make more but that's what goes into the box i mean I'm trying to count the ones on it i tried to figure out why does ellie disappear between thanksgiving and uh, new year's yeah the troll <laughs> thought i was hiding it, it, i wasn't hiding i was working <laughs> i'm not kidding you we have people over I'm trying to count how many kinds there are in that box. Yeah, Ali, uh, Aaron says you brought his cookie porn here today. <laughs> you got a lot in there in that box, I'll tell you. There are 18 in that box. I missed the, the, the chocolate snowflakes are next to the gingerbread, man. You know, that's my most favorite one to make because you stamp them out and then I use some royal frosting and I draw silly ass faces on them. Mm -hmm. And you know, my husband keeps saying some of them look like snide and I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Leave my snide gingerbread men alone. Yeah it, yeah, it wasn't something I was born with. That is 27 years of practice, practice, practice. Sicilian style. Some of them are, Amer we call them Amerigan. They're Amerigan cookies. Really like good. those peanut butter blossoms. I don't guess a chocolate chip cookie ever comes out of your oven. <laughs> too, too common. <laughs> no. Matter of fact, Mr. Mr. Ellie's favorite cookie is a brown butter with bourbon chocolate chip cookie, and they are really good. Mm. I actually eat something I actually bake. I'm dumb. What's brown butter? Brown butter is what you did when you were making the top. You brown the butter in the skillet, and after while it's browning, I add that tablespoon of bourbon to it, and you take that and add it to the batter once it is cool enough to do so. You don't take sticks of butter at room temperature. You brown the butter, and it gives it this nutty aroma that's nice that makes that cookie but yeah i make all kinds of cookies one of the cookies in that box was i call it my my rum raisin oatmeal cookie i macerate the raisins in rum yeah jen uh, i'm lucky jen eats most any kind of cake i don't think there's any cake that you don't uh, jen is there a cake you don't like Girl, so pretty much eat anything. Yeah, she's pretty much, uh, I mean, she'll have the lamb shawarmas and uh, she'll have the occasional mutton and uh, <laughs> she'll pretty much, uh, you grew up on a farm, so, right. you know, farm eating is like you eat what you eat, you know, whatever yeah. you're around the farm. Right. <laughs> anything that I can walk, run, crawl, creep, you can catch it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the cake is done. There it is. Uh, thank you, Bean. Thank you for coming by. Yeah, loves the way Ellie says mastery. <laughs> I mastered a lot of things. And he calls it like, that's something sexual. I just know it. That's funny. That's funny. Anyway, nice to see you, Janice Adams. Thanks for swinging by. And uh, yeah, we're just enjoying the uh, post bake party here. And uh, Jen just had a piece of that. We cut her a piece uh, 
here to give her. Uh, she she eats a lot of uh, test. She's uh, she's the guinea pig for the test kitchen here. And, uh, stuff. I don't think we've ever really had a conquer. No, I don't it's think it's how it's been. Even if you did, they usually taste good. I t yeah. These girls get so upset when they bake cakes and they don't look like, you know, Martha Stewart made them. I'm like, you know what? Even if your cake doesn't rise, it still tastes good. Yeah, it still tastes good. But, you know, I guess it's because people eat with their eyes and you feel like uh, you put all the effort into it. And I've had some... Uh, nine inch cake round um you know not come out properly out of the pan even though i'll put a wax paper or something in the bottom the side will stick or something like that sometimes i've lifted one piece to uh put the frosting between the two cake layers and oop, just came in half or just big chunk fell off the side you just put it on there and keep going you know and uh, don't worry about it I know once I was doing the flag cake for 4th of July and the son of a bitch thing got caught on something and a whole chunk of his side came out and my husband's like, uh-oh. I'm like, bullshit. That's what that che cream cheese frosting's for. I'll just pack that shit right in there like cement. Nobody will tell the difference. Yeah, who cares if we have a couple less stars and a few less <laughs> states on the flag? Who gives a shit? <laughs> we got 42 states now. Uh, you know your cake only has 42 stars on it, right? This is the uh, this is the 1882 United <laughs> United States flag cake. Yeah. Let's see. CC says next week. How about pumpkin cheesecake with cinnamon infused whipped cream? Oh God! Cream? Can we not wait till fall for that? <laughs> yeah, we just I just made a uh, uh, pumpkin pie last week. Did not with the pumpkin pie? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it was. So because they had that insane sale on, like thirty nine cents for a big can of Libby's pumpkin, uh, right. stuck a few of those bad boys away. So it's a fall thing, but why not uh, late winter too? It it was okay. It's not something I'd serve up in summertime, but uh, I think we might. Uh, I don't know if I'll make a coconut cake for. Uh, you know, Easter is next weekend. I don't think we're really going anywhere, but uh, um, I'm taking off the following week. I think I'm on vacation, but uh, I may uh, may make an apple pie or a blueberry or a cherry uh, pie. Let's see, Warren says, strawberry shortcake with whipped cream and cherry on top with Jen eating uh, first piece. All right, that's it, Warren. This is your final warning for me in this, uh, this chat. <laughs> Here's one that I did, and I, it's real simple, and I like it. You see this one? Oh, wow. Ooh. This is two sheet cakes, and in the middle is a custard, cut up strawberries and cut up bananas. That's sweetened whipped cream and strawberries. Mm. That's a full half sheet. That was Now, if you look, that's my old granite. That's from two summers ago. That's the green, and it had all this, like, opalescent jewelry in it. God, it made the kitchen look dingy. So that's why we swapped it out. That is really beautiful looking. That cake is, if you ask me what my favorite cake is, that is it. It's a vanilla custard, cut up strawberries and bananas, just very plain white, white cake. Sweetened, sweetened whipped cream. I take some of the crumbs. You see how I cut it? You can't see any of the, the side. Uh -huh. I take those crumbs and put them on top and use them as a decoration. That is an easy cake to make. I froze that cake for two weeks. How, and how, uh, well, you said it's your best, but the, the composition and crumb of that cake after being frozen for two weeks and then thawed. Yeah, it's beautiful. Hmm. And there was a piece of it that cracked right above that second strawberry in the middle. If you look really close, you can see the crack. <laughs> and I just threw some custard in there. I'm like, yes, that's really a, that's really a good looking cake. I'll we bake you. cakes. 
And the problem with doing a uh, like a coconut cake or something like that, uh, uh, you almost have to have like an eight-hour hangout to have something like that because you've got to make the cake, and it's got to really, it's Do really got to, yeah, you got to cool it down all the way and uh, come back and then and then frost it up. So you're really talking about. You know, a two-parter. Yep. So you got to bake the cake and then show yourself baking it, and then you got to do another one when you frost it. And of course, you know, actually, the money shot later. You always yeah. do an addendum video. Here's the slice of the cake, but you could get it down to two if you did it in two parts. Well, when Jen first came, and it's coming up to the second anniversary, April first, when she came to the ranch, the first cake I really made was a coconut cake and that's on my uh it's on I'm the top yes it, you know if you look coconut cake you'll see uh you'll see the coconut cake that was a good cake that, uh, that coconut that's cake excellent. so um <clears throat> i think yeah i think we'll make like a either a blueberry a cherry or an uh an apple pie uh and i'm like ellie when it comes to apple pies i'm not going to slice apples and stick it in and then put the chopped crust on and then Hope for the best. I'm pre-cooking my uh, to a to a big degree. I'm pre-prepping my apples on the stove top and uh, making sure that that thing's sitting on the bottom of the uh, oven for because you can't really blind bake an apple. By Warren. By by Warren. You can't really uh, you know. So you got to make sure you're sitting on a baking stone or something like that so that bottom crust really uh, gets flaky. Um, you know, as opposed to just putting it on a regular rack and stuff. There's some challenges. Okay, thank you, Juice, for stopping by. He's going to go run to the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go about another uh, another half hour or so and then uh, uh, shut her down, another really good, uh, fun baking uh, hangout. And, um, you know, I like to have Ellie in here because she does a lot of baking and she knows a lot of the tricks for uh, and tweaks and things. It makes it a lot easier. Some people get very put off with that. You know, it's the NIH not invented here syndrome. So unless they made it, screwed it up and learned by their mistake, they're not willing to, they don't want to listen to somebody. But I'm like, if somebody can, you know, like our, our practice run Ellie with the uh, getting his cake out of the uh, pan and stuff doing that beforehand and practicing a little bit so it was worth I like to share my mistakes you know some people don't like to tell you they've ever screwed anything up but i like to share the mistakes because you can learn from someone else's mistakes yeah I'm sure, uh, uh 52 shuffle says try a victorian sponge rosie I've oh, never victorian heard. sponge is wonderful what is it could you describe that they take a, a, a cake, a sponge cake, and they slice it down the middle, and they put cream and berries or, or really, really good jam in the middle, and it's delicious. Yeah, Mr. Grinch says, Ellie, you made me miss my Italian grandma cookies. Look, it's not too late. If you ask around, somebody's got a recipe. You can figure it out. You can be grandma. Or Just you have to have the patience. You can you can glom on to an Italian in your neighborhood that bakes and uh, there you go. They like to feed people. It's an obsession. I <laughs> love <Yeah>. glom on. <laughs> yeah, it, the Italians like to know that you're eating well. Let's see. Uh, Janice says my favorite is confetti angel food cake. Are you using sprinkles, Janice? I guess that's putting sprinkles in the batter. I love the the confetti thing. They call it funfetti. is really a big thing. Everything is funfetti. Yeah, my daughters always wanted funfetti cakes for their uh, birthdays and stuff. Yeah. I gained ten pounds. You gained ten pounds. And that's no. I've made <laughs> angel food cakes before. And one of the things is they use a lot of egg white, and then you have to figure out what to do with the uh, yolks and things like that. Buy a carton. Buy a carton of egg white. Yep. Buy that way eggs. you don't have to 
You don't have to crack them. You don't have to separate them. You don't have to figure out what to do with the yolks. When I know I'm making a lot of angel food cakes, I just buy a carton. A carton makes two cakes. That's nice. That's a good idea. Very good idea. Somebody is taking all the trouble out for you. That's what they do in an industrial bakery. When you go to the bakery, they're not sitting around separating eggs in the back. They've ordered <laughs> eggs already in the carton. That's and it. they weigh everything. You know, an angel food cake is 7.6 ounces of egg whites, which triples in volume. Well, it's like, uh, yeah, professional bakers are much more by weight than by uh, volumetric uh, measures. Absolutely, because you're you're scaling up to, uh, you know, put in 172 eggs. Really? I lost count at 129. How many do I have? Who knows, you know? You weigh it, you're never going to screw up. Rose Levy Birnbaum's book, The Cake Bible, has everything in weights and volume. So that if you want it to volume bacon, a lot of scales, there's two or three scales out now that are called baking scales where it allows you to measure in grams, ounces, you know, it, you can, when you do it by weight rather than measure, you get more accuracy. There and are also, some things that I prefer to do that way. Also, um, you know, when you think of things like pound cake, one pound of sugar, one pound of flour, one pound of uh, butter. butter. You know, that was the measures for a pound cake. Yep. That was it. Hence the name pound cake. So. Yeah. Pound cake, God. One of the biggest weaknesses. I hardly ever make it because... <laughs> But if you want a real challenge, I will crack out my my uh, almond paste pound cake. It's guaranteed to make you clap your hands at least twice. It, it, it weighs a pound. It is awfully thick. And you can't screw it up. You cannot screw this up. Yeah, I've made lots. I've made lots and lots of... Uh pound cakes and I'm happy to say I've never never screwed one up they're an easy cake to make uh, and then you just tweak it I use like Ina Garten's lemon cake recipe where you drizzle the sugar and lemon oh, yeah. I mean, damn that's an amazing cake that's on my uh, that's on my site the uh, lemon glazed uh, cake because we have the we have the lemon tree the Meyer improved lemon so it's nice to go out and get the fresh lemons and squeeze them and get the, uh, get the uh, uh, what do you call that, when you get the outside peel. The zest. Yeah, the zest of them. You zest that. And it's, it, man, it is an amazing cake, that lemon, that lemon cake. I told, you, I told you the little secret thing that you can do to really, really blow out the lemon. When you measure the sugar, take about a half a cup of the sugar out and put it in a bowl. Put the zest in it and rub sugar, and it makes more oil come out of the zest. Yeah, that's a good idea. Now, some people do with that with vanilla. They'll put sticks of vanilla in into the sugar and have it actually infuse the sugar with that. Yeah, pound cake's one of my favorites too because it's a it's a sturdy cake. It doesn't have doesn't have a, a you know, I don't like cakes that are too airy and too, they don't have any tooth to them to me, but a pound cake always has, always has good density and good, good mouthfeel to me on it. Let's see, Cece says, save the egg yolk and make hollandaise sauce for eggs benedict for the next morning. Yeah. I guess we're not real breakfastites. Around no. here, are we? So it's usually just coffee for me. Yeah, and uh, yeah, but that's good. I'm pretty picky. I rarely have there. hollandaise sauce because when I'm, I'm almost inevitably disappointed when I go to a restaurant and they use a hollandaise sauce. It's, I don't know. We just lost uh, Kelly there. So. I used to eat the hollandaise sauce in Germany a lot. Yeah. In but uh, it's, yeah, I tend to get disappointed. I mean, if I'm going to your house to eat dinner, CC, then I know I'm going to have like spot on perfection. Uh, I love breakfast at night. Yeah, some people, Bobby likes, well, when we go out to dinner, 
Bobby and Jen will have friends. Jen gets what you, what do you call it? Two by three. Two by three, yeah. Two so eggs, two eggs, and cakes, and then you get a side of bacon. Yeah. And I'm eating my damn salad. So and for dinner. <laughs> Uh, let's see, he makes an awesome baklava with a bitter chocolate drizzle. I know, she'll be hiding that cake. She'll be taking care of that. Bobby will be enjoying that tonight. Scotch eggs, boiled eggs molded with sausage meat coated in a breadcrumb and deep fried heart attack on a plate. Yeah. A lot of the typically British food is, or at least was until the 1980s when, and uh, <laughs> late 80s and early 90s when um, Britain got tired of being tagged with this recipe as the world's worst uh, cooks and uh, things, and they really started to lift their game dramatically. And now uh, I, I put the English Channel on a lot of the uh, credit for that, for increasing the mobility between uh, England and France. Let's see. Hi, Linda. Two eggs side by uh, side each and a, a pair of toasts. Not bad for supper. French hockey players used to talk that way. Yeah. Scotch eggs. Uh, you, guys are, you guys do some amazing things. I will tell you. It looks like the weather maybe took down Ellie's uh, connection over there. So go about 10 more minutes and we'll shut down the uh, hangout. That'll be about two and a half hours with, from beginning to finish product. From what I'm seeing about scotch egg is boiled egg is molded with sausage meat. So I don't think I've ever had it served with a my wine mustard sauce yeah uh let's see uh, elvis must have come in and abducted ellie into the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> you think ellie's cooking in the lisa marie now huh mallory <laughs> could you imagine that oh well, let me move the uh, let me move the jugs i use for uh bathroom here out of the way go ahead cook something for me are you serious like really So let's talk about things that I would do differently the next time if I make a uh, uh, pineapple upside down cake, I would uh, lavishly spice the bottom of the, uh, you know, you melt the butter in the bottom of the skillet and then you add the uh, pineapple slices. But before I put the pineapple slices in, I would uh, spike that up with some nutmeg some allspice and a little hint of clove on there to really make an aromatic uh, cake. That's one thing that I would do. The other thing that I might do is uh, use coconut extract instead of vanilla extract for the cake. Because coconut pineapple is a good, it's a good tropical combination yeah. on there. So, oh, no, Ellie says, no, I meant her husband. She said that uh, usually calls him the king. Oh, okay. So, yeah. All right. Depends on all your, and all on your taste. That's exactly right. So that's one thing that I would do is I would spike that up spice wise dramatically on there with cinnamon, nutmeg, a little bit of allspice and some clove, and maybe even a little bit of ginger on there too to really give that thing a zing in your mouth on that. And then, Instead of vanilla extract, use coconut extract, you know, a little lemon, lemon zest to the butter, uh, to the butter too, yeah. Anything to sort of give the cake a zing. Right now it's fine. I feel like it's 1920s style, like you would make in a 1920s kitchen. You wouldn't be experimenting. You wouldn't be having a lot of spices that we have today. You would just be making this cake with just the uh, basic home ingredients. And the exotic thing would be having the slices of pineapple. So that would be the thing. You had rum flavoring too. Uh, Janice, same deal. Uh, just some of the things that I would do this time to make it differently uh, on there, just to spike it up. Because this is the kind of cake for my own um, eating enjoyment that I would want to be to have a really not a really powerful punch of spice when I bite into that uh, cake. Welcome back, Ellie. 
I don't know what happened. We lost the internet for a minute. Mallory said maybe Mr. Ellie kidnapped you away, but I thought uh, maybe Elvis kidnapped you to do some mm -hmm. cooking in the Lisa Marie. Oh, God. <laughs> Can you, does, does that even have a functioning kitchen? <laughs> it's got a two-burner uh, propane thing. There's no oven on it, but, you know, uh, some RVers will use a Dutch oven and uh, use that for, like, a uh, oven. But, so, Ellie, I told some of the things that I would do, and certainly I would uh, – give a real punch of spice on this i would add coconut extract um cc said a, a little of some lemon zest to the butter and janice said that. Some, yeah um, all good yeah or even some orange zest yep orange zest and really have a tropical uh oh, yeah. sort of a tropical tropical feel to it so but i was mm -hmm. telling people i would imagine and then since this cake really was introduced in the 1920s Probably the spices weren't that readily available. This was the way it was originally done. You know, there's, uh, you know, you just. You also use those Santa Rosa plums. They would work. Pears, pear upside down cake, real popular. Yeah. That Grape would be, pears. That would be, uh, yeah, that would be something to, uh, something to you. Now, some people will also make a pecan upside down cake too, which is almost like a pecan oh, pie. Caramel. It's like, yeah, it's like a pecan pie, but it's a caramel pecan. It's the way it comes out when you flip it over. You're going to have a solid pecans on the top there, and it's kind of like a quick pecan dessert as opposed to making a, a you know, rolling out a dough for a pecan pie. And doing all that. This one, uh, hey Blue, this one took about an hour and 15 minutes, and then I'm just running my mouth here for an hour and 15 minutes enjoying the post game show. This is a pretty cake, this uh, pecan upside down number. Yeah. <laughs> so, what other fruit could you use in an upside down cake? I said, I think some people would use mandarin Peaches. slices. Some people might use pears. Uh, glade pears pair very well with brown sugar. Uh, peaches. Peaches, yes, peaches would be a great one to have on. Now, here. if I was going to do peaches, I might add some Chambord or Frambois liquor there to the go. top. And that way you get that Melba combination of peaches and raspberry. Yeah. That's when you hit it with the vanilla ice cream. Yeah, the vanilla ice cream. So this this is what I would say. This is standard 1920s, all kind of, all sort of eye appeal, maximum eye appeal. You can imagine going into somebody's house in the 1920s for dinner. And then they would wheel this out of the kitchen when it was time to uh, time to have a dessert and coffee. And there'd be a wow factor. Not only were pineapples a real novelty, but to have it upside down, uh, you know, is is uh, interesting, uh, interesting, you know, must have had a big wow factor for as popular as it became. I mean, you, like you said, Ellie, they sold the hell out of uh, pineapples once this, probably once this cake came out. They wanted them in everything. They wanted you to put it on meat. They wanted you to make it in appetizers. There was some appetizer that they made that had a pineapple round ring around it, and I just can't remember what it was. Well, I can imagine a uh, cubed pineapple on a toothpick with a little uh, cube of ham on it, like a honey baked ham would be a hell of a combination. You know, yeah, I do. Or d'oeuvre. Uh, let's see. Ellie, talk to us about making a custard. I love making custards, and here's why. You do so little effort for so much, you know, wow factor. Custards can be used to highlight fruit. If you have really nice raspberries, if you put them on a nice custard, perfect. One of the things when I lived in the South that I learned how to make from somebody who worked for my ex-husband she was a real Southern gal. She taught me how to make a banana pudding, AKA the banana pud. And you get to make that meringue. They use vanilla wafers 
I up the game a little bit. I don't use vanilla wafers. I use Lorna Dune cookies. Wow. And one shortbread cookie. Yeah, a shortbread like I cookie. I did with the cheesecake. I, the hell with the graham cracker. I want a pecan right. you know, bread cookies. Yeah. So we had company once, and I made two giant pans of it. And it's usually all gone, but I made giant pans. So we had some left over, and I said to my husband, you know, I'm going to put this in the ice cream maker. And he's like, really? I'm like, it's a custard. It should work perfectly. There is nothing better than banana pudding. You turn into banana pudding ice cream. <laughs> I'm wondering about a uh, custard really is just egg yolks, isn't it? And uh, cream and... Uh, you temper uh, your egg yolk mixture with a, a cream mixture and together they solidify. Like the kind of custard that I used in that cake that was slit in the middle. Yeah. All that was was done on top of the stove. You know, I, there was some half and half, some cream, some a vanilla bean. I used a whole vanilla bean, and I let it macerate in there. And then you mm. temper your egg yolks to it, and nice. you, you make it about as thick as you like. Nice. Uh, Pastry yeah. cream. Let's see. Thanks, Ellie. Jen, uh, Natty Bean says, when you moved to the States, Missy Jen, did you notice a big difference in the quality of chocolate? Absolutely, in the States? yeah. yeah. The American chocolate sucks. The, the German chocolate is a lot better. Higher cocoa content. It's or, uh, a lot more milk, milk content in the chocolate. It's one of the things that I think that you can't really see if you've always been in the United States how much better the imported chocolate is. Even compared to like Scharfenberger and those uh, um, chocolates? Scharfenberger got bought out by Hershey's. It's never going to be the same. Yeah, well, that, that just answered that right there. <laughs> if you can go to the store and you what was I thinking, Allie? <laughs> if no. you can go to the store and you Calibit. like Rit Ritter chocolate. Guitard. Calibit. Ripper Sport or like a Toblerone. The Toblerone. Uh, yeah. Angle and you yeah, buy, buy that and yeah. try that out. You will never buy American chocolate. Again. You actually get sent <laughs> some of that chocolate from Germany once you break off the little bits. I don't yeah. know. I can't remember what the name of that is. That's the Toblerone. No, it's, this is, uh, it comes in the bars. That, uh, oh, the Kinder chocolate. Kinder chocolate. Kinder yeah. chocolate. Oh, I love Kinder. Yeah, if you ever have eaten Kinder chocolate, you'll know. It has an amazing else. smoothness to the chocolate. It yeah. adds a lot, and they add a lot of nuts. Nuts and, and different products. I'm going crazy here. I'm not going to be eating anything. <laughs> oh, oh, to make the Kinder chocolate cake. <laughs> oh, and Lord. you can make a lot of, you can add a lot of Kinder chocolate stuff also to like cakes and stuff. Uh, yeah, let me say bye to Mr. Grinch. Thanks for stopping by. Most appreciated coming by today. Love Do you having. like a bueno, Jen? A bueno. I like the buenos. Uh, somebody people. made a bueno cake the other day, and I was like, oh, that looks so awesome. What is a bueno's cake? A bueno is, is made by Kinder, and it's a crispy thing covered with a, a light chocolate something in the middle of it and then it's dipped in chocolate. That's when when you're out and about, do you have a world market? It's a very light hazelnut, really light, uh, crispy, cream. and then it's got a crispy crust around it, and then that All right, nice tough. milk chocolate around it. And All right, it's tough just, guy. All right, when you just guy. bite into it, and then it just all melts together in your mouth. Yeah, you're just killing me. Bite by bite, and it's now. just like. You should have a world market. They have all the national chocolate. We have a chocolate. world market. We have a world market no more than two miles from here. Yeah. Yeah. You go in there, you can grab a Kinder, and the wonderful thing about a Kinder is they're very light, but they come in two little plastic sleeves inside the container. You could eat a one-inch square of that. It's really not a diet killer. Yeah, Mallory Williams says, "Has anyone ever tried Z?" 
chocolate. It's a wonderful chocolate out of France that I would typically give to a few of my better clients for Christmas. It's truly special. See? I'm going to check that out now. See, chocolate. What makes it so special, Mallory, if I can add? It comes in a beautiful container. Holy cow, it's like a wood jewelry box. Could you put that on, could you put that on present, uh, Ellie? I will. Let's see if I can view the image and then I can make it. Okay. Now, nah, hold on. Sugar. Oh, the price. <laughs> what makes it the special, the price? <laughs> I can imagine. Most stuff imported from France is extremely expensive here. Z chocolate. What is it's kind of a strange name. You would think you'd have Parisian or you know uh Champs Elysees chocolat <laughs> or Bonjour chocolat. But honestly, the chocolate is so smooth, not so rich, but just perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Let's see, Aaron says, I used to really like the lemon chocolates, but I haven't bought something like that for myself in a decade or so. Yeah. Oh, the boy. dangerous thing about Guinness chocolate is it's so good. You eat one piece and then you That's it, the whole an, hour, an hour later you eat the whole box. The whole box. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Five thousand yeah. calories later, you wake up and it's good. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm trying to get it to present, and it's giving me a hard time. It's okay. If you can't, can't no big deal. I can look I it can up. Later. Give the link. Okay. Let's see. In Calgary, we have a European chocolatier open shop. Bernard Cali, Calibou. Unbelievable chocolate. Yeah, I think the French do amazing things with uh, chocolate, too. I'm surprised they had in Western. Canada, though, as opposed to uh, Quebec. Let me hit this link for a minute. Here. That's strange. It worked all damn day, and now it doesn't. Oh, yeah, it's got its own little uh, own little box to it. I'm going to take this uh, link, and I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to uh, paste this on the external if anybody wants to see this. So That's expensive. I bought Mr. Ellie for Valentine's Day, uh, Jacques Torres, which is out of uh, Brooklyn. There's the uh, there's the link for that uh, for that chocolate. That looks pretty fancy. Is is that a wood presentation? Box? Comes in a wooden box. I'm telling you. Good lord. Well, 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 they better be. Hey, good. Mallory, whose hair are you cutting, Hillary Clinton? Good lord. Shit. Do they come with a cigar or something? See, I like wow. black licorice too. It's not box. many people are. I, I enjoy black licorice flavor. So. Do you, Janice, uh, do you get the uh, Harry Bow black licorice? Let's see, Supple says America has just taken over Cadbury English did. Chocolate is not the same. I can it believe that. That's Cadbury gross. was a great, great, great chocolate. Yeah. I love flake. I always loved flake. I like the dairy bars and the, uh, the nut bars. The Cadbury were just tremendous. Mr. Ellie loves lion bars. There we go. Yep. Yeah, nothing's ever the same when it gets taken over, usually by a American company. Yeah, it, it used to, when they announced that, you used to be able to buy the stuff like everywhere, and then there's some kind of thing where this new company that took over Cadbury said, "No, we don't want that." So now you can't get it. Yeah, well, I would think that they'd throw a fit in the UK about. Uh, you know the uh, the Ministry of uh, you know corporation. They don't want us to compare their Cadbury to our Cadbury. Let's see. I asked Mallory about that uh, Z chocolate. She said the good thing is you can order a small box of just a few pieces as a gift, and it still comes across as very special. 
It sure does, Mal. Yeah. Great it's, idea. Uh, look at the box that it comes in. Now, I don't know if you've ever all ever had C's candy. Now, he would say C's would be a world-class oh, yeah. chocolate. Yeah. Very high butter fat yeah. content because P Bobby used to work with the guy at the, his dairy that would deliver uh, the high-end butter fats to uh, C's. And they used a ton of that stuff. S E E apostrophe S. It's a Warren Buffett company, and he never really screws around with the company. When when he buys it, he lets the people do the things that led them to success, like Mrs. Blumpkin's Nebraska Furniture Mart and the uh, Brown Shoe, and uh, well, the Geico division and some few. One of the divisions, Dairy Queen's owned by Warren Buffett, but also the uh, C's Candy is owned by uh, Warren Buffett now. So, yeah, I'm blown away. That Jen was cool. really impressed by that. And they sell it all by the pound. No matter what you get, it's all the same price. It's like 18 bucks for a pound, and then they they'll just give you any ones you want, or you can buy a box of it. So. Let's see, Allie, you gave your stylist a box of cookies. I bet they appreciated that. She loves it. She, yep. she can't wait to get it. And usually the some of the deliveries I have Mr. Ellie do, they look forward to the cookies and, and visiting with him. <laughs> Aaron says they, uh, they cater to mindless consumers <laughs> here and add wax and stabilizer so it won't melt in your hand, but it will taste like shit. <laughs> Even though I got to say, People overseas clamor for M and M's. I don't know why. They that whenever someone show up, I think from uh, else, they're like, "I want bags of M and M's," and I'm like, "Really?" I think kids like you know, kids really drove M and M's and stuff like that. See, some of this, it's just that I can't really like heroin. You get yeah, you know, you get uh, stuff. I'm telling you, son, Michael, Aaron, they got these. Uh, Are they in a Trader Joe's, Aaron, the uh, molasses chips? Because molasses is something you'll see few people bake with blackstrap molasses and stuff these days because it's such an overpower. It's not a flavor everybody likes. Yeah, it's a very powerful, uh, you know, we try to make rum with the blackstrap horse uh, feed rum. Not rum, but uh, molasses, and it's a very, very, very powerful flavor. They got the, this California crunch, and I bought a pound of that. And <laughs> two days later, the box was empty from seas, and I'm like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, we appreciate that. Well, listen, guys, it's 1.45. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, as usual, Ellie, thanks so much for taking time to uh, Thank you. ride shotgun on this and helping me uh, turn out, I think, a really uh, beautiful cake for eye appeal here, the uh, pineapple upside down cake. The very traditional recipe, there's no tweaks to it. It's, uh, what would you call it, vanilla sort of cake here, but it turned out great. It, uh, it looks good. It has wow appeal. I know what I can do to spike it to my own. Uh, way in the future. So thank you, Ellie, for running me through the drill of how we're going to plate this up. And, uh, safety yeah. precautions. Yeah, safety precautions. I should have had my riot shield on, I think, <laughs> with that. But uh, thank you for the side chat, for uh, for Cece and for Aaron and uh, Juice and Mallory for coming in. Most appreciated, uh, Janice Adams, nice to see you. Everybody, Grinch, 52 all the war and everybody that popped in. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I might, uh, if nobody's having something, I might fire up a chat for just a few hours tonight or something like that, but we will see. Mallory, thank you for coming in as usual. Um, I, I love having you here in the kitchen. You'd be so happy there's not a dirty dish in sight here. And that's a good one. Thank you again, uh, Ellie, and you all have a uh, wonderful day. And this uh, broadcast is concluded March 20th, first day of spring, 2016. Rosie O'Kelly Channel, Pineapple Upside Down Cake. Thank you very much for being along.